You're gonna be just fine. I just talk, you know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick, transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me, as always, is the ever-quotable Jay. I lied. The house is alive. We're all going to die. Fair. And the silent hill biker himself, Kenneth. Woohoo! We're finally fucking back after a much-needed yet long hiatus. Yes, we, we had plans to actually come back earlier, but life stuff, health stuff... We're bad with that shit. Cursed um, episode, man. Cursed episode. Cur- we had another cursed episode. Uh, we tried uh-huh. to do Evil Dead again. It did not happen, and that's why y'all got the round table of the dead. But after that fiasco, we're back. We're not going to do Evil Dead. That's not why you're here. Uh, we're doing Horror Coliseum, um, House on Haunted Hill, versus 13th Ghost. We are doing the remakes. Anyway, uh, Jay. What have you been up to? Um, I can't remember how long it's been since we recorded last, so I don't remember. What have you been doing this week? Uh, this week, nothing but working. Um, I can't remember if I told y'all, but like everybody quit at work. So I've been doing a lot of six day weeks. Um, so having some time off has been pretty rare. Uh, I beat Mortal Kombat 11 (laughs) because the whole thing with all the DLC was on sale for like nine bucks. And I was like, I'll pay nine bucks to play through the story mode. Fuck that, man. I tried doing the hardest tower, and I was like, fuck that shit. No, I did the story mode on regular, whatever the default difficulty is. Uh, The final boss is cheap as as shit. Mortal Kombat's always been cheap as shit. It's always been programmed to read your exact moves. (laughs) Fuck that shit. Uh, Kenneth, what have you been up to? Oh... My life stays fucking busy. Um, between being a dad, um, I got my custom bow in that I paid fourteen hundred dollars for. It took me nice. a year to get the motherfucker. It took longer it, than a year. Let's be honest, because I went with you when you went to go do it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So I think we went in February to put down the deposit of 2022, and I want to say that I got it in April something like that it was either april or the beginning of may of this year so yeah um but it was well worth the wait it is such a fucking smooth shooting bow and it's absolutely fucking beautiful um if anybody out there listening got any interest in seeing pictures of it i'll post them up if you you know request it on our page or whatever um but yeah it's a beautiful absolutely smooth shooting bow and then over the course I'll, I'll send you some pictures. And um, over the course of the past uh, week and a half, I've had food poisoning. Couldn't be more than, you know, you know, 10 feet away from the bathroom at any given time for about four days. And then right after that, my kidneys decided they wanted to start spitting out stones right after that. So, uh, you know, and then the old lady's on a cruise. So I'm doing all the stuff by myself. And uh, it's just been hell eating pain medicine and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Other than that, and uh, yeah, I burned through uh, four seasons of Yellowstone in uh, the past like five or six days. Very impressive. I have made a new best friend, which is a cricket that is right outside my window. So you're going to hear that throughout this entire podcast. Uh, so get ready for that. <laughs> I have been playing uh, Pokemon Yellow a lot just because like, I really like the first generation of Pokemon, and I like to play through it like once a year. And I decided to play Yellow this time, so I'm doing that. Other than that, it's pretty much just reading books. I am currently reading Battle Royale. If y'all yeah, that's a great book. I read that once. Yeah, I wanted to read it like a decade ago, but trying to keep up with all the Japanese names, I couldn't do it. So this time, I said, fuck it. I'm not going to keep up with the names. I'm just going to keep reading the book, and hopefully, eventually, I'll just get it. And you know what? I'm halfway through the book. Uh, Well, I'm a little under. I'm like 45% through. And you know what? Some of the names are starting to click now, so it's working out really well. And then I'm also about to reread Womb by Duncan Ralston, which uh, I highly recommend. Really quick read. Um, especially if you've never read it, read any like splatterpunk, it's a great like introduction because 
it's crazy and it's out there, but it's not going to be as offensive as like reading, um, like a Judas sonnet book. You know, it's crazy. What? Um, talking about books, um, the school nurse at my kid's school actually just wrote a mystery novel. Huh, that's really cool. Yeah, she's gonna let me. Uh, she's gonna let me proofread it before she actually g- finishes the publishing. Like right now, they're going through the editing and everything, and uh, she's gonna let me proofread it right before she sends it out, just to see what I think. And you know, kind of like when you go to a movie and you let people fucking do the 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 initial screening to see shit that you might want to change or whatever. Yeah, she just wants to get my thoughts on it, so she's gonna fucking let me read it ahead of time. That's, That's cool. Ballin'. Um. I'm also about to read Beast of Burden that Judas Sonnet just released, uh, which apparently has to deal with, like, black metal and, I guess, a monster. Yeah, black uh, metal. So, if you're into that shit, check it out, Beast of Burden by Judas Sonnet. I'm about to read that probably this week, um, because it's a shorter book, so I'll probably, like, pause on Battle Royale for two days and read that. Um, which I read a lot of, like, shorter novel novellas i guess of splatterpunk stuff so if you ever need recommend recommendations let me know uh, i do have some audible credits to burn through um <laughs> some of them are on there but if oh her book uh no one writes for free just dropped on audible and if you want some fucked up like like krug from last house on the left type shit Oh, damn. Do that. Like, it, when you read the book, like, right before the shit pops off, there is actually a whole page that is a warning of what is about to go down. And it even has, like, the tagline at the bottom from, like, Last House on the Left, except it's, like, it's only a book. It's only it's a book. It's only a book. <laughs> nice. Because um, she's a huge fan of, of, like, that and then, like, Italian horror and shit like that. Her her book, Hell, is fucking a Lucio Fulci movie in a book. It's, she's one of my favorite writers. Um, so, yeah, no one writes for free. I promise you, it's really fucked up. And if you get a hard on from it, you're fucked up. Oh. Yeah, I got a hard on from it. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, Jerry helps me burn through my audible credits. That's true. I, 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 I grab, like, every. I, I don't listen to audiobooks that often, but every once in a while, I'll go on Kenneth's Audible. And see what he's got and see if there's something out there that I want to listen to. And if not, I'll see how many credits he has and then I'll just take a credit. (laughs) Because at one point in time, I had a shitload of credits. I want to say I had like, how many did I have at one point? You had like 18 and it was like, if you don't start using your credits, they're going to expire. So I was like, Kenneth, I'm about to download like three books. See? Yeah, I was just like, go for it. What I normally do is I... uh... I listen to books in the winter because in the summer I like to drive around with my music on. <laughs> um, so in the winter when my windows are up and it's cold and rainy out, I fucking, that's when I listen to most of my books. So usually I cancel Audible for the summer, but I freaking forgot to do it. So I've got like four credits because <laughs> I forgot to cancel it. So I'm going to have oh, so to find something to listen to. You're one of them summertime people like riding down the road, windows down, music fucking blaring, wind going yeah. through the air. Yeah, exactly. Is, I, but I instead he's listening to like, murder dolls and it's just like twist my twist my twist my sister like well that is, that's not wrong considering <laughs> wednesday 13 is my favorite band but, that's uh, why i said that because the only i know some murder doll songs i don't know any wednesday 13 songs. oh man in fucking uh at the end of october he's gonna be doing a, a murder doll set in seattle and i'm gonna go see that that's gonna be fucking sweet that's ball i listened to that first murder dolls album on repeat that shit was fucking balling um I don't know what the fuck y'all were talking about. Oh, man, it's good stuff. It's uh, it. Wednesday 13 and Joey Jordanson from um, Slipknot. Okay. It's uh, like core, not new metal, but like it's, none of the rap stuff in new metal, but it's like horror, like pop metal. Yeah, it's closer to punk than anything, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's got some, it's got it's, some punk. It's, it's like a horror punk it's good with stuff. metal drumming. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So, with that being said, we are going to start this, and I have to inform everyone that I have to give thanks to my big titty girlfriend, Chelsea, for the idea of this show. She told me (laughs) to call her that. Well, she said boobied, but I changed it to titty. 
Yeah, Titty is way better she, than Boozy. She said I had to give her credit, and I had to call her my big titty girlfriend. <laughs> uh, so, with that being said... Can s- confirm. Yes. With that being said, <laughs> we are going to start off with House on the Haunted Hill. Now, if, it's been a while, so if you don't remember, our horror coliseum takes two movies... And we rate each movie, giving them points for 10 categories. Points are 1 through 10. And we go around, talk about the categories, give our points, and at the end of the two movies, we'll see which one wins. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to start with House on Haunted Hill. And um, I guess I'm going to start. I'm going to start this time. So, Story. I gave it a six. There's nothing too unique. Uh, it's kind of had already been done before. It copies the original movie actually really well, but it adds some extra spice. It has stuff from the original movie with it being a haunted house that everyone's invited to by a millionaire who's having problems with his wife, who's, whose wife has a accomplice with her to try to get him killed by getting shot by someone else there that they've tried to push into turning crazy the biggest difference is is that the ghosts are really fucking real in this movie so i don't think the story does anything crazy but i don't think it's a bad story but there's nothing there to kind of make me push it into an upper echelon so i gave it a six uh jay what did you give it oh i'm gonna fall in the middle this time um i gave it an eight um, which is funny because I kind of agree with you, but I, I just I just scored it higher. Um, I, I like the story. I like the the backstory of the uh, the the doctor. Um, yeah, that was that a new thing com- completely added for this movie. That um, if I wish they would have explored that more. Then... Yeah, yeah, me too. We could have gotten more more backstory for him. Um, shit, I'd watch a movie about him. If oh yeah! Before it burned down, that'd be good. That's true. Hey, um, fucking homeboy's still alive. We can make this movie. You know, Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was good. Nice to see him pop up too. Um, he always gives a a great performance with the uh, creepy characters. All right, Kenneth, what did you rate it? I gave it a seven. I thought it was a decent story and it is probably because of, of like a mesh of the two reasons that both of y'all gave, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, it's a haunted house. It's a remake of another movie. Um, you know, but at the same time, I, I really liked the backstory of, you know, the creepy doctor and, and, you know, um, the asylum and all the rest of that. Um, I like the fact that they pulled people that were like descendants of people that came from the dis- asylum in. I like the fact that the guy that was running the whole spiel was fucking, you know, a guy that actually did like, you know, horror themed rides and, and haunted houses and shit like that. So I liked all those aspects together, but at the same time, I feel like that the story took a lot of elements from other things and kind of meshed them together with the exception of little shit. You know what I mean? Like I felt like that the story of this one was very familiar to other things. It, it kind of reminded me of other shit, you know what I mean? So I really, I liked the story, but at the same time I couldn't give it a higher score just because it reminded me of other shit. So I didn't find it as original, but I still liked it. Does that make sense? Oh no, it does. It does. All right. So next one is character and character development. I gave it a six price Evelyn and Pritchett are the only characters that I truly find good. Everyone else are so bland and cookie cutter that it's just hard to like get involved with them. Price obviously is entertaining as shit. Evelyn plays the, 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 the uh, scold. What's the term I'm looking for? Not wounded wife. Scorned. Scorned wife. And uh, Pritchett plays the fucking crazy guy who who owns this house and knows that the house is fucked up and haunted. Uh, And he does a great job, especially bringing from the character from the original movie. Because he he really does grasp that, except brings it to a modern age where this guy is way more panicky and sarcastic. So I really like that. So I I gave it a six based on those three characters. Um, Jay? Uh, so very similar to you, just again, a higher score. Um, I gave it a seven. 
Uh, and that's because I am a huge fan of Jeffrey Rush's, and he fucking just knocked his character out of the goddamn park. Uh, I, I, I could watch that man act in, in anything, uh, and I think he did a fantastic job. Uh, and then I'm also a huge Chris Kattan fan, uh, and I've, I've always liked his shtick um, on Saturday Night Live. Um, I've got a copy of Corky Romano on my shelf. Uh, he's, he, he makes me laugh. Ladies, I... ladies, I know you just got wet, but calm down. We're a professional podcast. <laughs> oh yeah. If there is a girl out there getting wet because I own a copy of Corky Romano, then give her my fucking Facebook and I'll talk to her. But I doubt that there is. <laughs> Fair. Uh, but yeah, so same reason as you, I, I really like those two actors and I, I think they both did a really good job with their roles. Um, everyone else was just kind of okay, but that's why I scored it what I did. All right, Kenneth. Um, I gave it a seven also. And the main reason why I gave it a seven is pretty much the same thing that Jay said. Jeffrey Rush is amazing. Um, I really, really loved him in the pirate series. So when I watched this and then so on and so forth, like, cause there's, there's always, when you watch certain movies or something like that, you'll notice an actor. But then when you watch other movies that you really, really enjoy, and it happens to involve that actor, you start paying attention more to shit that you have watched in the past, or, <coughs> excuse me, or shit that you watch in the future or so on and so forth with that particular actor. So, that is so true. Right. And so it's kind of like the same thing with, you know, like if you're riding down the road and then you just got, you discover to yourself a particular car that you want, you'll start seeing them every fucking where. It's kind of the same thing with this. You know, you see, uh, like me, I absolutely, again, I love the Pirates series. And so seeing him as Captain Barbosa, now I pay much more attention to him and other shit. And in this, I thought he fucking, I agree with Jay, he blew this fucking thing out of the park. Um, also, also, I'm a fan of Chris Kattan. Um, but at the same time, you know, Famke Jensen, I like her. She's fucking hot. I thought she did great in this damn, uh, in this role. And then uh, I've kind of got, you know, a little bit of soft spot for Allie Larder. I've always thought she was fucking hot as fuck. And, uh, you know, even though her character really wasn't shit in this movie, I can't, you know, that's just what it is. So I kind of scored that one a little up for those those particular four actors. And then I can't remember who... The dude that is the one that gets his fucking face ripped off. And because I know I've seen him in other shit. He looked oh, familiar and I thought he yeah. might have been the guy from Deep Blue Sea because I just watched Deep Blue Sea. But I don't uh, he I don't think it's him. I don't think he was in that. But he's been in other shit that the I The guy really... in the chair watching the monitors? Yeah. Um he has hundred and nine fucking acting credits in IMDBs, so Yeah, but uh, there's <laughs> always a, a particular there's always a particular thing that I would remember him from if I actually pulled up IMDb right now. Um, there'll, there'll be a particular thing. But I know I've seen him in other shit, and I fucking liked him in other shit. And then, you know, um, the dude that played Blackburn, I've seen him in other stuff too, and I just can't remember what else I've seen him in. Oh, so, yeah, he's, he's like one of those actors that just kind of shows up in things. <laughs> right. You know I know believe I mean? that's called a character actor. No, no, like, uh, come on! I'm a little stoned, and I'm having a hard time with my words. But he, he is—he looks like, like he he would be like every <laughs> dad in a uh, Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. Oh, he's and in Mister Deeds. There's one other actor that we haven't touched on yet at this current moment, but Jerry hasn't got to his yet. But fucking Jeffrey Combs, I don't even, I don't, I don't even know how many lines he had in this movie, and he still fucking killed it. Oh yeah, he's always, I, I said this already, he's always great with his creepy characters. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I don't, I don't even, did he? How many lines did he have? Any? I can't even remember. Uh, I'm sure he had, yeah, some, yeah, but. Something he said something during the opening. But other than that, that I mean, up. other than that, he really didn't say shit, and he nailed it. So you know, got to talk about him. So I gave it a seven overall. Fair. All right. So now we move to pacing slash editing. I gave it a seven because up until the evil cloud is released, it's awesome. For from the beginning. Till that last 15 minutes when Evelyn gets thrown into a wall and an evil cloud comes out, it is just fucking going. 
And the editing is just great with all of the cool little editing tricks they did. Um, using a buzz saw in front of the camera to like make it look like it's like skipping. Um, shit like that was just awesome. Um, I, I think it's paced really, really well. I, I really enjoy all of it up until like that last 15 minutes. But you'll hear me bitch about the last 15 minutes this entire show. Um, so, but I did give it a seven because besides that, I thought it was great. Just that it would have been like an eight, maybe even a nine if it wasn't for that, that just huge drop at the end. Jay. Um, I didn't really take the stupid CGI cloud into account when rating this category. Fun fact, um, it is not CGI. Really? Really? Well, some parts of it. I just thought it was but terrible. It's actually CGI. like a bunch of like naked women that they like put all together to look like a Rorschach painting. It's inspired by like HP Lovecraft shit. shit. There is some like bad CGI in there, but like apparently the actual like a lot of it, like the core design of it is not CGI, but then there's like a ah. lot of like CGI around it. I guess I should have watched the special features on my uh, Scream Factory disc that I fucking watched this on. <laughs> um, but I gave it a uh, an eight for pacing and editing, um, mainly because I didn't really, I didn't take into account the cloud. I just the overall well, pacing of the movie was good. It starts off uh, with a bang and then quickly introduces all the main players to you, and then it's it's off to the races. And I so I I enjoyed it. I just think the pacing drops really bad. Like it feels once the clouds release, the movie feels like it just gets in like an abrupt ending and it just kind of kills. The, it, and they also lose any of the like unique editing they were doing. You know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Kenneth, what did you give it? I gave it an eight. And I, I and I agree with you. I think, uh, I think the, the, Pacing was really, really good, but I understand the point of the reason why they slowed it down because, you know, it, it was supposed to give it. I, I don't think it worked out quite as well as they had hoped, but uh, it was supposed to give it like some form of intensity, I guess, at that moment for like the strength of the evil in the house and so on and so forth. And, and, and I don't think it was executed as well, but I understand the point of it. And so I just went ahead and gave it an eight because, you know, everything else up until that point was really good. I don't really think it drug really anywhere except for maybe in the areas where they're like searching through the basement. I felt like it kind of drug on a little bit, you know, especially like when, um, you know, what's her name is looking for Eddie. I felt like that kind of drug a little bit, you know, but overall, I think it was done really well. So I gave it an eight. All right. We move to atmosphere. Um, you're going to hear this a lot. Super good. Up until the evil cloud ruins all that atmosphere. Um, I think it does a really good job of, like, keeping that that panic going and that sense of, like, where the fuck are we at? Did we take a left? Did we take a right? Like, everything kind of looks the same. What's that door? Like, there there is this, like, great haunted house like feeling to the movie um and, and like a mystery to all of it up until the cloud so i could only i, I could only give it a seven jay uh i also gave atmosphere a seven um i thought it was for the most part really well done um there are just some instances where it kind of falls off but uh but overall yeah i uh i thought the atmosphere was was pretty well done all right kenneth i gave it a nine. Oh, i thought Ooh. the atmosphere was fucking great i thought the whole the whole use of the the grays and everything else like that and i'll get more into that when we get to the set design part but i think that the use of the gray and the the a lot of the brick you know what I mean? Because even when you're looking at the outside of the house, it's kind of got like that stone look to it. So I think that that, that kind of added to the element of isolation 
And so when adding that element of the isolation into it, it really gave you like a kind of a claustrophobic kind of feel in the whole place. Like even, even when, like I said, when you see the outside of this house, it looks fucking huge. And then when you go into the, uh, the main, the main, uh, fucking, I don't know, the, the four year ballroom, whatever the fuck, the main part where they're at, when you go in there, you know, it kind of seems open and stuff like that, but it still feels claustrophobic to me because of the use of that particular set. And I'm trying not to inflate both of them, but when you use that, it gives that, that claustrophobic atmosphere of being in there. Like, and, and it almost makes you feel like you can't get out even before the, the, the whole thing with the house happens where it closes down. And so it kind of makes you feel like that to begin with. And then especially when you get downstairs where it gets even darker and more gloomy, but with at the same time having like those hospital type lights and, and, and you guys have been in hospitals before. There's just, when you go into certain spots, like when I was a kid, I had so many family members that were in hospitals that I would go wander around when I was a kid. And back then you could without anybody giving you any bullshit. And then when, when you got down to the basement type area down there, you know, there would only be like a few fluorescent lights down there because all the power was going upstairs where the patients were. And you'd go down through there and it just, it, it was just like this dark, ominous kind of, you know, not as pretty as up top where everybody's at and everything uh, would kind of be. And so I really think that the way they kind of did that with even more, it looked like, the the even with the light bulbs that were down there that blew and shit like that it still had that fluorescent kind of look to it and then when you see the lights come on with the uh, the uh, the models when you're first going down the stairs with like the horse and all the rest of that it's kind of the same thing it gives you like that fluorescent inside the hospital look and if you've ever, like I said if you've ever been in a situation like that before it's really fucking creepy and I think it conveyed it really really well and then when you got down there the combination of those two things even when it opened up into that 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 fucking room with the uh, the thing in it the schizophrenic thing in it even when it opened up in there it still seemed like everything was claustrophobic and I really liked how they utilized that for the atmosphere so I gave it a fucking nine and I thought it was great yeah, I think the only movie that kind of does all of that better than this movie is, like, Grave Encounters. Yeah, Grave Encounters was fucking awesome, especially for film footage. Yeah, they... I've they... never seen it. It's oh, really dude. Cool. If, if, have you ever watched Ghost Adventures? Yeah, I, I mean, I've watched those it's... type of shows before. I don't really so it's, care for them. It's making fun of them while also still being a really good horror movie. Yeah, imagine, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, imagine, like, you know how we all fucking damn watch these shows like fucking Ghost Adventures and stuff like that, and we're like, how much bullshit is involved in this, and how fucked up it would be if some real crazy shit happens? Well, yeah, that's what Grave Encounters is, it's like if the fucking crazy shit happens. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I love Ghost Adventures, I watch it all the time, Uh, it is like, my version of Trash TV are like ghost hunting shows, Bigfoot hunting shows. Um, like, that's just what I, I'm super into that. Um, so it's I so watch Ghost Adventures. Back. It's seriously, because he's such a douchebag. He is, but like, <laughs> it's so funny. Like, me and Chelsea will watch Ghost Adventures and just make fun of him the entire time. I can't say anything. Me and Cheyenne watch shit like my 600 pound life. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has their trash TV. <laughs> listen, listen. I watched. I haven't gotten through, but like two episodes of it. But there's a show on fucking HBO Max or just Max now, whatever the hell they're calling themselves, called Milf Manor, and it's about a bunch of older ladies who want to date younger guys. The twist of the show is all of the younger guys are the are all the other women's sons. That's fucking funny. <laughs> what in the porn hub? Right. Now I'm going to watch this shit. I'm gonna Holy <laughs> shit. I, I kind of want to watch it too. I right. think I know what I'm watching Saturday morning. I got yeah, that's fucking episodes. great. It's, and it's, what oh, is man, it called? Milf Manor. Milf Manor. Yep. <laughs> wow, they didn't have it in the budget to get a mansion? Um, okay. Uh. We're going to move on. Yeah. Um, what, what category are we fucking on? Uh, 
Well, uh, the category that helps build atmosphere, scenery and set design, and there is only one score to give this, and that's a 10, because it looks like almost every asylum I've ever seen on Ghost Adventures, except obviously like pimped out for the movie. It's like if Pimp My Ride pimped out a asylum for ghost hunters to be on Ghost Adventures. You know, like it, it does every fucking thing perfect like you're walking around and it's just dingy as shit like kenneth brought up earlier how like he thought when like they were walking down in the basement how it kind of dragged and, and i do get that but for me the only reason it doesn't is because i'm still looking in the background at like everything just like is there gonna be anything or like man just look how fucking great everything looks and i think that's the only reason it doesn't drag for me is because I just love the way everything fucking looks. So I I could literally just sit here and suck the dick of this like set. Whoever did the set design for this <laughs> movie, they deserve a blowjob. They deserve like just the bit. Whoever gives the best blowjobs in porn, like the top ten should all just line up and blow whoever did the set design for this movie and me saying all this the set design is probably a woman so <laughs> we'll f we'll get whoever is the best at eating pussy or maybe they want a girl to eat whoever whatever their sexual desire is orally <laughs> we're gonna make that happen for them is what i'm saying you heard it here first folks um so, so if you're yeah. listening set designer for house on haunted hill 1999 yes uh, Get in contact with our page and we'll uh, hook you up with some good head. We're going to, to the the award show in Las Vegas. Let's go. Um, so yeah, I gave I give it a perfect ten. Um, Jay, uh, I gave it an eight. Go I, fuck I, yourself. Yeah, well, you know, I I felt Was it like the black I didn't want to be. <laughs> it's just I didn't want to. I don't know something about it. It just it wasn't perfect for me. I don't really have specifics, but overall it was really good. Like I liked the way the house looked from the outside. Um, I thought they could have shown more of the inside because the house looks like fucking huge. Uh, but besides that, it was good. I, I like I like the design, just not as much as you. I'm upset, Kenneth. <laughs> well, oh I gave god, it ten also. I gave it a fucking 10 also. Okay, I thought okay, it looked here we go. fucking okay. amazing. You know, I really dig the... I feel like an asshole. <laughs> you should. You yeah, really I'm... should. I mean, it looked fucking great, man. I mean, everything about it. Like I was saying when I was talking about the atmosphere, it really, it really pulled me into what it's like to walk around in a fucking hospital, man. <clears throat> Especially down in those lower areas because it's not big and open like when you're up in the top. It's 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 a smaller fucking hallway. It's dark. You know, you're just waiting on a zombie or something to come around the fucking corner or, or come out of the morgue because you're going to walk by it at some point. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's exactly what it looks like. It's very fucking claustrophobic. And then when you add the 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 deterioration and everything, because had nobody been in there since the fucking 30s and then the fire and all the rest of that. I mean, I thought it looked fucking great. And then the lack of technology that they had for the time period also. You know, if you go into, like, a place now where you're going to get, like, a fucking uh, an MRI or some shit like that, you know, you just see the big fucking machine and then the rest of it's just a white fucking room. But you look at this, for the 30s, they had all the wires and fucking, you know, the dials and the gauges and all the rest of that. It looked like a fucking airplane cockpit on the wall with a fucking bed <laughs> in the middle. It looked awesome. It looks so fucking good. And it really gives you that fucking feeling of being there. And the and the really more fucked up part about it is, is back in that time period for asylums, you know, we didn't have nowhere near the idea that we have now on mental fucking health. So a lot of that shit is fucking true, where they would fucking just experiment on people trying to figure out how to fucking fix them when, when they didn't know what the fuck was going on with them. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know what uh, I'm saying? And I, I really think that they captured that very fucking well. And I, I, I thought it looked fucking amazing, you know. And the only the only gripe that I have is that 
the room where the fucking black smoke came out of, I wish they'd have focused on letting you see the inside of that room more because there was a chair in there and some other shit. And it's just like, I feel like that that room had a backstory to it as well that we got kind of robbed of. Mm. That is a very good point. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it, it seems like that, that that room could have been a character in itself. And then the other part of it is, is you never find out why the evil is locked in that particular room. Why? What is, what's going on in there? You know what I'm saying? I can say the same thing for the background and whoever's house where all that noise is coming from. What the fuck is going on back there? Somebody's making dinner. Woo! Food time. But yeah, I would really like to see, I would, I would really like to have known more about that room of what was going on in there. But everything else, I thought it looked fucking amazing. Fair. All right, we move on to acting. Um, I just gave it a six. I didn't think anything was, like, super extraordinary. I didn't think anything was bad. Uh, Though I do give it up to Chris Kattan for killing that role. Um, Except for the fact that, as a ghost, he can't act for shit with his face. That that was just (laughs) awful. Um... But I, I he did great. Um, Price did really fucking good. Um, like the acting was good, um, but there was nothing there that that like blew me away. So, yeah, Jay, what do you got? Uh, I gave it a seven, uh, mainly for the same reasons. Um, I like I said earlier, uh, Jeffrey Rush, Chris Kattan, and uh, and uh, what's his face. The doctor, um, <laughs> they all did really good, so I, I gave it a seven. Um, I felt everyone else was just bland, really. I agree with that, Kenneth. I gave it an eight, and I and I gave it an eight for kind of the same reasons why I would I went into with the character development. I mean, you know, you got your fucking hardcore hitters, and they're the ones that pulled the score up. You know what I mean? And then you got the other ones, which were just kind of. Eh. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though I'm a huge fan of Allie Larder, I felt like she was just kind of, you know, uh, going through the motions. Same thing with, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I can't even remember the black guy's name. Tay uh, Jiggs. Yeah. What else has he been in? I know he's been in a few other things. He was in Equilibrium. I suppose the long since I watched Equilibrium. Such a um, good movie. Everyone should watch It is that a good movie. one. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, so his that his really didn't blow me away. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was the typical. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a badass. You know, with a little bit of feeling. You know that kind of deal. Um, the doctor. You know why was he? Guy, why was he? Did he feel like every like '90s R&B guy? He was like, a baseball player. <laughs> I'm like hard and gangster, but I'm like sweet and stuff. You know. Because that was the fucking thing at the time. Like, you know, he looked like that D'Angelo video where it was just nothing but a black like set and just him with his clothes off. <laughs> but I mean, you know, and then the, the guy who played the doctor, you know, Blackburn. Um, it feels like that he's the same guy in every movie he's in. Yeah, that's fair. I completely agree. Yeah, right. he's the same dude. You know what I mean? So, and then Chris Kattan killed it, except Jeffrey as a Jensen ghost. Killed it, and then you know Jeffrey Rush killed it, and then Jeffrey Combs killed it, and barely said anything. So sometimes you and, ain't got to talk. You just gotta, unless you're on a podcast, then it's kind of like the fuck are you doing? And then the hundred maniacs, they did a great job. You know what I'm saying? And the nurses who got who you know had their titties pulled out and everything else like that. They did a great job of displaying the fear of what was about to happen to them. So you know, I gave it an eight. All right. Um, special effects. I gave it a seven because there was some cool special effects. Um, but I don't think there was anything that like like there was some. I, I thought there was more cool editing stuff than there was special effects you know what i mean there was more cool camera shit than there was the camera the special effect i thought the special effects were fine like none of them looked bad some of the like cgi touch-up shit looked kind of terrible 
But, uh, and why is it, why can you have, like, the CGI that was in, in Jurassic Park in, like, what is that, 95? Yeah. And then no one else in the 90s just could do it, it like, everyone else in the 90s was just like, look, the best we've got is PS2 graphics, okay? <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can explain to you exactly why. Explain it. Because nobody had nobody at the time period making movies like this had fucking Steven Spielberg or James Cameron fucking pull to be able to fucking afford to get their studios to be willing to pay the amount of money that these that these damn uh, CGI artists and effects artists wanted to fucking produce that kind of shit. Yeah, well, James Cameron got kicked off his first directing job, so fuck him. Yeah, but still, I mean, you look back at you look at you look back at the visual effects of the Abyss or fucking Terminator Two. Yeah, you know uh, Terminator Two holds up so good. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. I mean Terminator Two to this day looks great. You know what I mean? It was great visual effects. And then you look, at, I mean, fucking Steven Spielberg, dude. That's one of the most famous motherfuckers in goddamn cinema history. Of course, he's gonna be able to be like go to a fucking. What, what studio did Jurassic Park? Universal? Universal? No, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was Universal. I could be wrong, but I think it was Universal. But either way, man, Steven Spielberg, fucking, at this point in time in his career, especially now, he could just walk into a fucking studio and be like, I want $100 million to make a movie, and they'll be like, okay. Oh, yeah, they let him make whatever the fuck he wants. All right, look, we gave all the dick sucking to the set designer of this movie. We're not going to suck Steven Spielberg's dick also. Well, I'm just, I'm just making a point. A little bit. Anyway, <laughs> so I gave it a seven. Jay, what did you give it? Um, hold on. I was looking at Jurassic Park's production studio. Uh, I also gave it a seven. Um, I think the uh, the kills that were in the movie were done well. Like the the face being ripped off looked good, and uh, the effects that they used for the doctor uh when he was on security cameras looked real good uh it was creepy as shit um but that fucking see and i had i known the cloud was a practical effect i might have rethought it a little bit um well it's like the the just, core of it's practical like the but it, there's there's cgi touch-ups I just didn't like the way it looked i don't either so that, that kind of killed the score for me because it's uh a big chunk of the ending of the movie, and I just I could like, I could part. <laughs> go on a M Night Shyamalan is a village rant on how much I hate <laughs> this Dark Cloud, like so so much that I may never play Dark Cloud on the PS2 ever again because I might think of this movie. Oh, so I, I, that's for like the five people who will get that joke. Um. Kenneth, what did you rate it? I gave it an eight. And there were things that I actually really liked. You know, I liked um, the scenes at the beginning when you know the doctors cutting up, so COVID, cutting open somebody else and stuff like that. I thought that I thought those special effects looked really good. Um, you know, I really uh, honestly, when it comes down to the cloud, not the cloud itself, but the beginning, right? Right when they start to realize that it's starting to come up, the whole like claymation looking thing of it going across the floor, I thought that was really cool. I actually liked that. I liked that it was kind of like a, a, a going back to to formula from like Evil Dead days and before. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, there was just there was a lot there was just certain things that I just thought was really, really great. Like the dude's face being ripped off. I thought that was cool, even though his entire skull cavity was completely hollowed out. I'd like to know where his brain and everything else went. But I thought it looked cool. You know what I mean? I thought the uh the way the ghosts looked was cool. Um you know, so I gave it an eight. I, th I, th I thought it was all, you know, nicely done for what it was. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it wasn't nothing major, but for what it was, it was really cool. You know what I'm saying? And I probably would have given it a nine had the cloud not looked so fucking shitty. The fucking clouds. I'm going to turn into that old man who yells at the clouds. Um. All right. 
Kill slash gore. I gave it a six because like most of the kills are just aftershots. Like the 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 most of the kills that we get are kind of in the chaos of the the opening scenes of the hospital. But like once we actually get inside the place, we don't get too many kills that are actually on camera. And that's that I, I didn't like that. That kind of irritated me. Um, so I, I could only give it a six. Jay, what did you give it? Um, I gave it an eight. Um, I, uh, this movie was a lot gorier than I remember it being, um, to be honest with you. Uh, I thought it was mostly creepy shots of the, the doctors from what I remember. I didn't remember like the pencil being stabbed into that guy's neck and, uh, that dude getting his face ripped off or, uh, what's her face getting decapitated. Um, so I thought while they were aftershots, the, the gore of it and the kills of it were, were pretty detailed and, uh, interesting enough. Um, so I gave it an eight. I thought they looked great. All right, Kenneth. I gave it a nine. I thought the kills were cool. You know, I liked the pencils through the neck, even though those pencils looked like they were about fucking four inches, a little longer than a normal pencil. Um, but I still thought it looked cool. Um, the, the chick with the camera, I, even though we didn't actually get to see her kill, I liked the whole dragging across the floor, up the wall, across the ceiling and into the wall. I thought that was actually really cool because she just kind of. Yeah, she just kind of disappears into the wall, and then I and then I kind of had like this visceral thing where I thought about what that would be like because you know that she's alive, and I was like, man, what? If, I, I, that's fucked up. Just to kind of, you know, and you can imagine it'd be painful being drugged by whatever the fuck was dragging her, you know, so on and so forth through the wall, and I'm just like, what the fuck? That would be fucked up. And then later you see her in pieces and shit like that, which I thought was amusing. Um, and then, you know, uh, I really, really like, uh, and see in this, in, in this particular category, because it's kill slash gore, I'm not really focusing on the gore as much as the, the, the kill itself, like that whole scene where she kills the doctor stabs him. And then it goes to that thing where he's just kind of, where it's almost like he's peering through a fucking keyhole at her face. And then it just kind of goes black. I've always thought that was just creepy when that happens in movies um, and how it's done differently, depending on each horror movie, which I thought was cool. And then, and then obviously, you know, his decapitated head and stuff later. Um, and he, as much as we don't like the look of the, the smoke, I think that whole thing where you see, you know, uh, like it's almost like fucking tentacles flying out of nowhere and grabbing a hold of something and snatching it in. It kind of reminds me of uh, the cartoons where somebody gets yanked off the stage with a fucking a uh, a cane or a hook. Oh you know yeah, I mean? one of those. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminded me of that, and I Exit thought that was stage left. Yeah, I thought that was fucking funny as shit. So that amused me too. I just uh, I kind of overall just really enjoyed the kills in this one. I thought it was pretty damn good. So I gave it a nine. You know, for as much as I like this movie, I seem to be the lowest scoring on it. But that's okay. We'll now move on to Monster Slash Killer. Uh, I gave it a 7 and I was really torn because I like all the hospital worker and patient stuff. I like the, the, the doctor being the evil person. But at the end of the day, the true monster is the, the black evil cloud that's controlling the house and every thing in it and pulling all the strings and i hate that fucking cloud just oh i hate that fucking cloud that dried up <laughs> dick looking company son of a fuck face cocker spaniel it's so fucking bad but i couldn't give it too low because i like the house i like the doctor i like the nurses so i i i, I gave it a seven um so that's that's a hey, that's how I'm justifying it. Jay, what did you give it? Uh, I gave it an eight. Um, I consider the doctor and the ghosts 
throughout the movie to be the main monster. The cloud is dumb, which is why it didn't score any higher for, for me. Um, but if the house is also the monster, and I really like the design of the house, and technically I like the design of the monster, just not its quote-unquote final form. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, fair. So I that's why I gave it an 8. All right, Kenneth? Um, I gave it an 8 also. And, I, and, and it's because I really like the idea of not just of like all the bad shit and the bad people and fucked up things that go on inside of a building culminating together into this mishmash of fucking just hate and anger and malice and everything together. I really like that idea, you know, because it takes it further than just, you know, the house being haunted it takes it to a point of where this 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 structure has become its own like just undead entity for lack of a better term where it's not really living and breathing but it's not completely dead either it's like in a realm of its own and it it wants to just consume any any shred of life or hope or anything else like that, that comes into its existence. And, and I really like the idea of that, you know, it's different than watching movies like the conjuring or something like that, where the house is just haunted. You know what I mean? It's, it's more than that. And I really like that concept. And so having all that together, and then again, as much as we don't like the way that the cloud looks, you see that when the cloud manifests itself at the end where it's a mishmash of all the bad shit that's happened because you can hear the, the screaming and the laughing. And I imagine there's probably some sounds of people fucking and shit like that all, all together in, in, in this, I, I really like that idea. And so, you know, I had to give it uh, at least a little bit of a higher score just because of all that together. It's just one of those things. It almost kind of reminds me of like Rose Red, you know what I mean? Where the the house itself, it's not just the people, the the dead people in it. It's also the structure itself where it's absorbed all this. So I gave it an eight. All right. You make a compelling argument. Um, Our next category is Hero, and I think this may be the lowest score I've ever given on this in a, in a horror costume. I gave it a two, because they technically put two heroes in the movie, because they do fucking nothing. The only <laughs> reason they escape is because one stole a ticket, and the other one's adopted. Congratulations. You, like... They do fucking nothing. They are the worst two characters in the movie. Like, <laughs> like they could not uh, have chosen the the most safest versions of characters to be their fucking heroes. I fucking just d- hate it. Like, they don't do anything that's annoying. Like, but if you're going to be, but that's, that's fine for side characters. You're the heroes of this story. It makes no sense for you to just stumble your way to the end and get out. I like, it's just a huge misstep for this movie. And it, it we're only lucky that we have like, Price and Evelyn and, and, and Pritchett and the actual haunted house to make me go, yeah, who cares? Oh, this is still fucking fun. Um, so yeah, I gave it a fucking two. Um, Jay, you? Um, I didn't hate it that bad. Um, I thought it was dumb. Like I, they, like you said, they were bland characters and. The fact that they survived is just like random fucking luck. Yeah, it's um, happenstance. Yeah, but um, uh, Pritchett is the real hero of the day because his ghostly ass lifted up the thing for them to get out or else they'd be dead too. 
Um, so I gave it a six uh, because I counted him in part of that uh, that scoring. Yeah, I'm gonna say I didn't like that either. But yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's some lazy like the last 15 minutes is just some lazy fucking writing. Um, yeah, a little bit. Kenneth, what did you give it? I gave it a six also, and I gave it a six because I kind of looked at it the same way Jay did, where Pritchett was really the hero, and I kind of, I don't I don't look at Eddie and what's-her-name as heroes. I look at them as more of the final girl. They were the ones that just happened to manage to get away, you know what I'm saying? And I can't even really call it, like, a a a not even as much of a final girl because a lot of times you know they're the ones that fight back and stuff like that they just spent the majority of their time running you know what i'm saying but but i kind of put them in that kind of like category of survivors versus heroes you know what i mean pritchett was the hero he was the one that kind of saved the day even though he was already dead and at that point you know i gotta give the man credit or the ghost credit however you want to look at it i gotta give him credit because at that point, after I'd already been sucked into the evil and all the rest of that, I'd have been like, fuck you. I don't give a shit anymore. I don't give a fuck whether you get the fuck out or not. I don't give a fuck. You know, well, yeah, that's How the fuck did he even get out of it? I, I, fuck, I don't know, man. Like I said, I kind of agree with you that it was a little stupid. But like, motherfucker time, just I mean, knows the house history so much. He was like, oh, I already have a loophole ready to go. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, overall, he was the one. Because, like I said, I wouldn't have done it. I don't mean, like, fuck that, man. You know, I'm stuck in this fucking shithole eternity for fucking ever. Fuck all that, man. Y'all are going to stay here with me. Fuck you. I kept saying yeah. that I was trying to get the fuck out from the beginning. Give me my motherfucking money and let me go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't want to yeah. do that. Y'all wanted to fucking chit-chat and all the rest of that. So now I'm fucked and y'all are going to be fucked. Agreed. Um... All right, we move on to score slash soundtrack. Uh, everyone knows I have a hard time with score soundtrack because I rarely notice it. Uh, I gave it a five because um, I think it's pretty by the numbers. I don't think I, I felt like everything was pretty much just like felt very much like this is appropriate music for this scene. Let's move on. So, Jay. Uh, very similar to you. Soundtracks are hard for me. Um, I gave it a six, uh, mainly because of Marilyn Manson. That's not a good reason. Like, <laughs> I like his version of Sweet Dreams or whatever uh, song they used for the movie. That's what it was. Yeah. So that's 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 it. Six. That song stood out. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> Kenneth, you're usually the one that's going to save us in this category. So, uh, what's the actual score that we were supposed to give it? I gave it a nine. Jesus. Yeah. And the reason why <laughs> I gave it a nine. Off base. <laughs> no, I gave it a nine because it was like, you know, the, the when the score comes in, it has a really, really good it gives you a good sense of the ominous things that are gonna go in. It comes in hard when it's supposed to come in hard. You know what I mean? And then when it's not, it, you know, it was it was really done well. Um, and with also the inclusion of music from the times, because not only did you have like you know, Marilyn Manson and some other bands on the soundtrack, you also had uh, the feeling of that kind of music. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, it kind of dates it, but at the same time, for the time period, it, it, you had the inclusion of the feel of that kind of music for for that time, you know, because this movie came out in 1999, so you, you, you had that going in there with it. So I think all that blended together, I think it did really well, especially in areas where the music came in for the shit going on with the doctor and and the stuff going on um, down in the asylum and stuff like that, because you can hear the differences between when um, Jip Price is out and he's doing his whole thing with the roller coaster and shit, and you can hear the difference from when they get into the house. So there's definitely a difference in the music itself between the two areas. Uh, some people may not be able to pick it out, but I could definitely pick out the difference between the two of them. So you can definitely hear that. And then you can also hear the difference in the music from when they're up top and when they're down below. And I, I really liked that with the inclusion of the music of the era for that time period. So I think they did a pretty good job. And, you know, obviously when they include music of the era, it's just a cash grab. But 
I still think the way that they did it was pretty nice, so I gave it a nine. All right, there is the actual score this movie was supposed to get. <laughs> Um, next we move on to Scare Factor, and I gave it a 7, because while there are some really fucking good creepy stuff in it, sometimes the characters, even the characters that I like, and I'm actually going to put this mostly on, on Price's character, kind of ruin the creep factor of it. Um, some of his reactions are just a little too cheesy, I guess. Um... But I do want to say the um, collage of horror we have in this is so ahead of its time because, like, when you watch a lot of, like, the creepy stuff you see on YouTube nowadays, um, especially when the kids are watching because, like, watching some of the stuff they watch, like, um, there's a channel one of the kids I babysit watches called Life of Luxury. They definitely have some influence from, like, movies like this. The fast editing the, the, like, shaking of the heads, the, um, the fucking creature that is just, like, a big mouth, um, very, very much of the horror aesthetic that is alive and well on YouTube, um, over the past decade and up to what's still going on today, very much looks like clips from this movie. You could take little clips of this movie, put it on YouTube, and it would fit right in. Put it on TikTok, it'll fit right in. You just have to change, like, you know, you can't show certain characters, and you have to, like, change the music and stuff like that. But it would work. So, with that being said, I gave it a 7 because the the scare factor that's actually in the movie sometimes gets ruined by how over the top certain things are so yeah jay uh very similar thoughts to yours um i gave it a six uh this is another category that's real hard for me because i don't experience fear when i watch these movies i don't get scared uh and that's not me like bragging it's just my brain doesn't work that way um so it's hard for me to judge so i just Anything that I consider kind of creepy uh, or disturbing, those are things I can, those are feelings I can, I can experience. Um, so like the doctor is really creepy, uh, a good amount in the atmosphere is really creepy. Um, so I gave it a six, but it just wasn't, I didn't get more than a six worth of, uh, of feelings of, you know what I mean? <laughs> that No, that's completely fair. Kenneth? I gave it a six also. You know, there's some creepy moments that I I agree with you influenced a lot of stuff in the genre and not only with like YouTube and shit like that for now, but movies that came out after this, you know, and I give it credit for that or whatever else, but I'm kind of in the same boat as Jay where it has to be certain things that kind of, you know, put me in the area of an actual scare factor and there's really not anything that I found majorly over the top and scary about this. Um, but at the same time, you know, again, that's not me, that's not me bragging or anything else like that. It's just when you've seen so many of these types of movies and things like that, you, uh, you do become desensitized to it over a while. And so it's kind of difficult, but at the same time, there was a few creepy scenes, but you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's not movies out there that creep me the fuck out. This just isn't one of them. That's completely fair. Now we move on to entertainment. Um, so I actually am, am pretty entertained by this movie. Like, I like this movie. I liked it when it came out. I like it to this day. But I don't like the ending. I don't like the Black Cloud. And I don't like our two main characters. So with that being said, I can only give it a 7. Which is still really good. It's still an entertaining movie. If it's on TV, I would watch it. But I do think there's small things that could have been done to make this movie a hell of a lot better and a hell of a lot more entertaining. Um, but I'm still fairly entertained by it, so I give it a 7. I enjoy this movie. Jay? Uh, this is going to be quick because uh, our thoughts are in sync with this one. Uh, I also gave it a 7 for pretty much every reason that you said. I have very little to add to, to, to your description of, of reasoning. Makes sense, Kenneth. I gave it an eight. I've enjoyed this movie since the first time I saw it. I, you know, 
I, I will, you know, get a hanker into want to watch this movie probably at least once a year, if not twice. You know, it'll just randomly pop up to the point of where, you know, back when you could add movies to your voodoo that you already owned, I borrowed it from a buddy of mine and added it to my voodoo. Just because it's one of those that I'll watch, you know what I'm saying, at least once or twice a year. I enjoy it. It's fun. It's entertaining. I gave it an eight. All right. Well, speaking of that, we go into rewatchability. I gave it a six. I would not watch this every year, but every two or three years, I would sit down and watch this. I mean, and that's it. With the original, the original I watch once a year, period. I love that movie. I'm a huge Vincent Price fan. Um, so I would watch this um, every couple of years. So I would give it a, a six. Jay? Uh, I also gave it a six. Um, it wouldn't be my first choice of, of movies to rewatch if I'm sitting down to rewatch a movie. In fact, I don't, I, I can't remember a time other than when it first came out on DVD that I watched it, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, I gave it a six. All right, Kenneth. I gave it an eight for the reasons that I said before about entertainment. I mean, it's one of those that I'll watch at least once or twice a year. You know, it'll just pop up in my head and I'll want to watch it just because... Like I said, it's a good fun ride fucking movie. You ain't got to really pay attention to it to know what the fuck is going on. You know what I mean? It's something that you can just put on and enjoy the ride. You know, it, you it's not like an A24 movie where you got to fucking open your brain up and fucking pour the movie in to hope that you understand every fucking thing that's going on. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those that you can just pop it on the TV and have fun. And so I gave it an eight. Yeah, it would be a really good background movie while you're doing other shit, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I was doing when I was watching it today. Um, So now we move on to pop culture. I gave it a four, because no one really talks about this except in, like, bad remake list. And even then, it's not cracking the top five. Hell, it, it may even only end up as an honorable mention or at a number ten. Uh, n- No one talks about this movie. It's it, it, there's too many other remakes people like to attack on. It, it, it did not. It's just not really talked about. Even when Scream Factory released it, it was a pretty niche release. So I, I gave it a four. Jay, uh, I gave it a five. Very similar reasons as yours. Um, I spent a lot of time on social media in in groups where people discuss movies, and I very rarely see it discussed, um, if if at all. Um, I posted about it uh, to see how many people would uh, interact with it, and and not too many people really gave a shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, five for me. That makes sense, uh, Kenneth. I always struggle with this category, um, but I gave it a seven, and that's just because I've had more of face to face, in person conversations about horror movies um, where this movie has gotten brought up. Um, and I, uh, you know, I wouldn't put that on pop culture as a whole. That's the reason why I started this with, I have a hard time with this category, but as for my personal dealings and stuff like that, there are more fans that I know of than apparently you guys do that actually have seen this movie and will bring it back up and enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of put it at the seven thing, but at the same time, you know, I'm not, you know, as most people that listen to this podcast know, I'm not real big into social media or anything else like that. I rarely ever fucking post. I don't get into groups or anything else like that. You know, the biggest reason why I get on social media is to fucking, you know, check out more horror shit that's coming up when I come across it. You know, like Days of the Dead. It's going to be two floors this coming fucking year. Um, you know, instead of just one. And a bunch of folks from Aliens is going to be there as well as Hellraiser, which I think is going to be cool. That's the kind of shit that I look for. And then the other thing that I get on social media for is to look at titties. All right. <laughs> My Twitter is mostly titties. That's uh, Instagram, Twitter. Fair uh, enough. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with that, the scores for this movie come down to uh, I, Jerry, gave it a 93. Uh, that is the lowest score it got. Kenneth gave it a hundred and eighteen, which is the highest score it got, and Jay got gave it a hundred and four. Right um, in the middle, right where I belong. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you usually are are, are right in the middle. Um, 
I, I I did rate this movie a lot lower, and it would probably make people think I don't like this movie. I actually really do like this movie, surprisingly enough. I, it might look like I don't, but I promise you, I like this movie. I liked it when it released. I rented it from a blockbuster and watched it on VHS, and I like it to this day. So, just understand that I have to be realistic with my scoring and we all have our reasons and that's why we do it but i do like this movie don't say i shit on this movie except for yeah. i shit on the black cloud yeah of course so all right all right and we move on to our next movie which is 13 ghosts which is pretty as popo because the reason these two movies are matched up is because they're both remakes of william castle movies both done by Dark Castle Entertainment. And f- everyone's seen the meme at this point of they need to make a 13 Ghosts TV series about all the ghosts. Well, more news came out about that today that Dark Castle wants to do it. They're ready to do it. Uh, they have to wait for the strikes to get done. And Sony owns 50% of, I guess, the the property so they've got to get Sony on board. But uh, the interview I read, the guy is pretty pumped about it. He really wants to do it. Um, Dark Castle is really going to push it. So hopefully we get it. Oh, oh God, I just burped. It tasted like the hamburger hell of stroganoff I had earlier. Do you put Man. sour cream on yours? No, I've never eaten sour cream in my life. Oh, well, I put sour cream on my stroganoff, and it's good. Something about the name Sour Cream just, I don't know, it sounds like I'm watching, like, an STD porn, (laughs) which I'm just not down for. Like, there's um, a short story uh, in Judas Sonic's Toxic book that's about these two guys who get off on, like, really, really disgusting, like body stuff like sickness and like STDs and Ew. shit like that like it's a really fucking gross story it's fucking awesome um uh, that just sounds gross but yeah gross. sour cream is what that that book that little short story could be called uh, but okay we're going to do 13 ghost and we're going to go in the opposite direction Jay is still stuck in the middle <laughs> uh but we are going to start with Kenneth Kenneth the story what did you give it I gave it a five. And the reason why I gave it a five is mainly because of the ghosts themselves. But unfortunately, in the movie, you one, you don't get a whole lot of backstory on the ghost. You actually have to do research to get backstory on the ghost. There used to be this website, I don't know if it's still up, where you get all of the backstory on the ghost. Um, and I know you can get a book that they've put out now. Um, you know, like where people fucking um, do, you know, like uh, their own versions of like the Necronomicon from fucking Evil Dead and shit like that. And you can get one of the ghosts and whatnot. But uh, in the movie itself, you really don't get a whole lot of background on the ghosts. And then the other thing else that I really didn't like about the story is there are aspects of it that are copies that almost fucking, I mean, reminded me of house on haunted hill if you really think about it i mean you've got these people that go into a house that's full of all these entities and they don't know that they're in there and shit starts fucking happening and they got to learn about it even though the main basis for why the ghosts are in the house is two different things you've still got um you still got the main basis and then look at the similarities if you really think about it now that we're on this Look at the similarities between Chris Kattan's character and Matthew Lillard's character, with the exception of the clairvoyance that Matthew Lillard's character has. They are damn near the same fucking character, if you really think about it. Even down to the point of where you remember in House on Haunted Hill where Chris Kattan's sitting in the chair getting fucking drunk and almost kind of feeling sorry for himself and is upset at the fact that he knows he's going to die. Matthew Lillard does the same thing except for with his pills. Sitting in the chair, basically doing the same thing, 
and then has to have somebody get him the fuck up out of the goddamn chair. The pretty much the same way as when the Eddie character goes off on Chris Kattan's character. Same way. But to be fair, that scene is in a lot of movies, not just House on Haunted Hill. It's not, but still, the characters to me, there was just too many similarities between the two of them. Don't get me wrong, I think Matthew Lillard knocked it out of the park, but there was just too many similarities between the two characters. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I even went back and I looked to see which movie came out first. And it was House on Haunted Hill, and I was just like, there was too many similarities between the two of them. So I gave the story a five. The, the whole aspect of the ghosts themselves was really cool, but the rest of it I thought was kind of fucking weak, so I gave it a five. All right, Jay. Damn. Well, I gave it an eight. Um, I enjoyed the story just as much as I enjoyed the story for House on Haunted Hill. Um, I like the the ghosts and the, the lore that surrounds them. Um, I like the... Uh, the, the the character turn in the middle of the movie, um, I I like I like the story a lot. <laughs> All right, um, Kenneth does have a good point that the the lore of the ghost is not in the movie. They they kind of give you nothing with that. It, it's in the bonus material. They have something on the D- DVD that goes through a little bit of a story of each ghost. Um, and that makes me feel like, oh man, yeah, I should have knocked it down a little bit. But I also gave it, gave it an 8 because I do like the lore that is presented in the movie. You do get lore about what Cyrus is is doing. And I really like that part. I, I like them, you know, him trying to do this so that he can get the knowledge that is available in um, Hell. I don't like the ending as it's a little too cliche, happy, happy. Um, that bothers me. But uh, And I probably would actually have knocked it down a peg to maybe a 7 or a 6 had I thought that all the ghost background story, it's not really in the movie, but I know it, so it's in my head, so I didn't really think about that. So Yeah, uh, I mean, like, look at it from a, from a standpoint of... Okay, you just went to the movie theater and you saw this movie. You know what I'm saying? No no DVD extras, no uh, getting on the internet, nothing like that. You just saw the trailer, thought it looked cool, went to the theater and saw it at the time. And then, hell, when the movie came out, you would have probably either seen the advertisement for it on TV or you'd have seen it on another movie. You know what I'm saying? So you're really not getting a whole lot of backstory out of the trailer, in which case that's a good thing. And then you went to the movies and you saw it and you, you know, you'd have had to done research like, like I did the first time that I watched it. I was just like, okay, I want to know more about the ghosts and things like that. So I fucking went and I did research and that's um, how I came across the website that had a whole, had all the lore and everything on it. Um, And so that was kind of the reason why I just kind of, you know what I'm saying? So looking at it from that perspective, you kind of got to look at it that way. Yeah, I still wouldn't go as low as you because I do think there is enough in the movie with the lore about what Cyrus is doing that holds up enough for me, so I would not go that low. But I get what you're saying. Um, And I think if I would have seen it in theaters, I would have came out, I would have been like, man, all those ghosts got out out at the end. I wonder if they're going to do a sequel and we learn more. I think that would have been my thought. I want to say that they were thinking about it at the time, but... I mean, uh, at least I think that all three of us know that that movie actually didn't do very well when it came out. No, it barely made its money back when you put in production cost and advertising. It pretty much just barely broke even if that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's grown a cult following over the years, you know, for people that actually really enjoyed it when it came out. In which case, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it when it came out, but... You know, and it's another one of those that I've watched many times, but it's just one of those movies where, where you know, it just didn't hit home at the time period. You know, because I th- I want to say that they were thought they that they were, you know, in hopes that it would do well, so they could make a sequel. Yeah, they definitely put the production behind it to, for that. But um, I, me and JP from Twenty Two Shot, he was doing he was live on YouTube today, and we were talking about it, and um, 
I just kind of brought up the we brought up the points both of us were talking about how like the, the movies from this time period were not looked at very well when they came out because the people that were in their 30s at the time grew up on horror from the 80s so they didn't like this new shit and us at the time who saw it in our preteens or teens we dug it but we weren't the the taste makers at the time so now that we're in our 30s we're coming back with that nostalgia and going yeah 13 ghosts is fucking awesome and you know because we have all this nostalgia for it and there's a lot of the movies uh from that time period that we look back on and we're like oh you know this house on haunted hill remake you know stir of echo shit like that where we're just like these are way better than what they got back then you know People are shitting yeah, like on the, Hollow Man back then, but now we're like, yo, Hollow Man's kind of fucking good. I thought Hollow Man was great when it came out. Um, and then uh, another movie that is very dated effects-wise and everything else like that, but it's all it's a fun watch that I like from around the time period, was Stay Alive, the video game movie. Never saw it. You it's never watched okay. it? I, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, if you can get past the fact that it's dated... For the effects that were in it, you know, because the video games at the time, you know, it was like basically, you know, you're playing a PS1 game. But other than that, I actually really enjoyed it for the time that it came out. You well, know what I mean? And, if and it's then, at least 18 years old, I'll date it. Yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I doubt you're going to feel like that you're going to go to jail or anything. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So we move on to character and character development. What do you got, Kenneth? I gave it a six. I really didn't think the the character development was really that great. You know what I mean? You got your clairvoyant guy, which is, you know, one of those things that's kind of a staple for for a lot of movies like this. You know what I mean? There's always some kind of clairvoyant person when it comes to ghosts, um, even dating back to fucking poltergeist. You know what I'm saying? So you've you've got that. And then you've got this family of people that had a fucking tragedy, you know, and then they're put in this extraordinary situation because they had a fucking tragedy and blah, 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 blah. And then you've got the rich fucker who's trying to goddamn do some crazy shit to see the fucking, you know, to gain more knowledge or something like that. And we all know that it's going to end bad and he's going to do something fucking stupid, you know, so on and so forth. It, it really was one of those where it's like, it was kind of honestly. Now that I'm saying it, I probably would have scored it lower, to be honest with you, because it was pretty fucking, you know, it's pretty fucking standard. You know what I mean? So fair. Um, Jay, what do you got? I gave it a seven. Uh, I agree that you know there was standard characterizations, but uh, I think everyone played their part well, and uh, most of the characters were likable. Um, I'm a really big fan of Matthew Lillard's, um, who I got to meet recently, uh, sweet guy. Uh, but, uh, I, I love anything he's in. So I guess I have a little bit of a bias because he's in the movie. Uh, Tony Shalhoub is another actor who I enjoy, uh, was a really big fan of Monk. Um, uh, and I like when he, when he shows up in things like Men in Black and whatnot. Uh, so my bias towards those actors kind of swung me a little high, so I went with seven. All right. Um, I I went with a five. Um, there is no real character development. Uh, I guess Kalina and Dennis basically just switch sides, so there's that. Um, but the characters, they all feel stock. Um, no one feels like they grow or, or, or do it. They feel like they're just placeholders for us to see all the cool ghost shit, you know, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's how that is. Um, Kenneth pacing and editing. I gave it a seven. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there, I felt like there was a couple of times where, you know, really drug a little bit like, um, you know, when, um, fuck. There were instances in the house where I think it drug on a little too far. I feel like that the sequences with the, you know, uh, where the girl's in the bathroom and then the fucking, you know, hot, big tittied fucking ghost was in there. I, I felt like that whole, that whole thing kind of drug on the back and forth between, you know, seeing the, 
the big titty ghost in the fucking t- in the tub and then fucking you know seeing the girl's face and the slow motion and all the rest of that i was just like okay come on get to it get to it um you know that kind of thing i felt like that kind of drug on a little bit i felt like there were instances where matthew lillard when he's going through his like flashy fucking you know head hurting seizure shit when the ghosts are kind of getting to him i felt like that kind of drug on a little bit too long you know what i'm saying and i mean i get what they were trying to do with it but at the same time i was just like you know uh, but there were other sequences where i thought it did really well so you know um it was kind of a back and forth, so I gave it a seven. I mean, it was all right, you know. That's right. another one of those that the more that I talk about it, the more I probably would have scored it just a little bit lower, to be honest. All right, Jay. Um, I gave it an eight. Uh, I didn't, fe- I didn't feel like it. It really dragged at all. I think uh, the opening is is a good pace setter, and uh, you know. It, gives us just enough time to understand the situation and, and get to know the characters a little bit. And then it throws us right into it. And I liked it. All right. So I gave it a five because this movie does this weird thing of going from these fast panic driven scenes to these really calm, slow scenes where it just is, is just showing going down a hall. It's not even following a character. It's just showing the hallway. Yes, everything looks super cool, but like you just had my heart pumping and then you're just going to drop it. You either have to do heart pumping or slow brooding atmosphere. You can't keep switching between the two. It, it, it just does. I'm not, I don't know what they were trying to do with that, but it just did not work for me. Like, I don't yeah, understand so what, what, like, what was the thought process? You're behind kind of that choice. You're kind of furthering what I was saying and explaining it a little better because I kind of I feel the same way. There were certain aspects of it where I'm just like, you know, like I said when I was talking about it before, I'm like, come on, man, just fucking get to it. You know what I'm saying? And then and then it'll get to it, and it's like, bah, 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 and then you're just like, and then you slow right back down, and I'm like, come on, man, you know, and and and. <clears throat> Going back to what I was talking about, about the bathtub scene, there's a movie that I saw um, called Mirrors. I don't know if either one of y'all have ever seen that. Um, I don't think so. And, and if you haven't, it's it's really fucking good. Um, but there was this scene, kind of like the same thing with this fucking... I've seen movie. What Lies Beneath. It's got a bathtub in it. Yeah, well, but, I mean, <laughs> a lot of movies do. But there's this, you know, this girl that's fucking, you know... Um, the like the spirits are in the fucking mirror and stuff like that and like there's this scene where she's in the bathtub and whatever else and it's kind of got like slow blur brooding to the beginning you know what I'm saying but it doesn't go too fucking slow and then it gets to the part where it's gonna happen and the ghost on the other side of the mirror just fucking goddamn grabs the inside of the bottom jaw and the top jaw and this girl sitting in the tub looking at her own reflection basically pulling her jaw apart you know you've actually brought this movie and this scene up on this podcast before i can't remember what we were talking about but you have brought this up before it's so fucking creepy and it's so good and you know anytime something like that it reminds me of that because that was just so fucking good and the pacing and that was great but this is just, I don't know, man. It, it, it was kind of like the same thing in the bottom where you're like, you know, where you're seeing the ghosts and the ghosts are doing their thing in their little cells and it, it slows down and then comes back and then slows down and then comes back. And I think they were trying to give it like this, you know, otherworldly thing when you see the ghost on the other side. But at the same time, it just wasn't hitting the mark quite right to give the creepiness that I think they were trying to convey with that otherworldly thing. And then the other problem that I have, you know, that I really didn't like is like, I thought it was a cool idea, but I don't think it was executed. Well, the, the, the shit with the glasses where you can't completely see what the fuck is going on with the ghost all the time. That irritated me, you know? So, and I'm pretty sure we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, Yeah. I didn't have a problem with that. I like that. I thought that was kind of, neat i didn't um, i just didn't i, I didn't it uh, to me it it it, it, it sl- like you were saying it slowed down to me the intensity of what was going on and it kind of threw me off but at the same time you know i like the movie so either way fair 
Um, all right, we go to Atmosphere. Can I gave Atmosphere an eight? I actually really liked it. You know, it, it, it was different for you know, and and this will kind of go into set design. We kind of go back and forth with these two, but. I actually really liked it because of utilizing it was, it's kind of like the opposite of what I said for house on Holland Hill, because in house on Holland Hill, you've got all this, you know, concrete stone, all the rest of that. And then in this one, you're still getting the creepy, creepy atmosphere inside a house of glass, you know, where the whole damn thing is fucking kind of lit up. But at the same time, when you get to the basement where the ghosts are, it gets dark. And 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 the utilization of the layers of glass on top that kind of bring down the 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 lighting down at the bottom and so on and so forth. And then again, conveying claustrophobia of it. And this and, and then the other part that they said in the movie was that it's it, it reminded me of a funhouse. And I think that they kind of did that really well because it gives you the claustrophobia. And also at the same time, being able to see through the glass what's going on with other people and and not being able to help them, you know what I mean? Because you're stuck on the other side. And I've always felt like that was kind of one of the most creepy things where you see like fun houses and movies is that especially if you're looking through glass instead of looking at mirrors where you see something happening to somebody on the other side of the glass and there's nothing you can do to help, to, to help them or help save them. And 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 I think they did a really good job of kind of conveying that feeling of that through, you know, the lighting and the set design and how everything was done. You know, I, I'd almost agree with that, except for when they like just go up a floor. I'm just like, doesn't that completely go against the whole like lockdown and everything's being controlled in this? They're just like, oh, let's pull up this panel and go up. Yeah, that really ruins it. But um, Jay, what did you have for? How the fuck am I supposed to follow that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Kenneth's over here with a fucking dissertation on why he likes the atmosphere, and like I agree with him. But what else am I supposed to say? Well, what I did you score gave, it? I gave it an eight. But then just say I agree with Kenneth. Yeah, that's that's what this boils down to now. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop Sorry, putting dude. Jay in the middle. <laughs> sometimes it works that's true um uh, well i give it a five because every time it tries to build up suspense it ruins it because it can't decide if it wants to be panicky or if it wants to be slow and brooding if it wants to make you feel claustrophobic or if you just want oh we'll just go up fucking here and chill in this library like it just the movie never feels like it it's it settles on what it wants to to do for you it, it keeps bouncing back and forth but not but and you would think that would work because it would make the panic be better but it, it it isn't because they're just like okay now we're gonna go down this hallway okay now we're gonna watch these gears open a door which is cool but um bro i was just having a heart attack like <laughs> the fuck are you doing? You're ruining the That's suspense fair. and killing my atmosphere. So, I didn't. I didn't. It didn't work for me, unfortunately. Um, Kenneth, scenery and set design. Gave it a nine. It, well, I didn't give it a perfect ten for certain aspects, but overall, I gave it a nine. I thought the house looked fucking cool. You know what I mean? I love the fucking spells and shit all over the fucking walls. I thought that was really cool. I like the fact that you could see the gears and everything inside the walls when the house was moving. Um, the symbolism that was all over the uh, all over the walls with the ghosts themselves. Um, I thought all of it was really fucking cool, you know. And the fact that the house was completely glass, I thought that was really cool. Um, I, 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 I just think it, I think the whole set looked fucking great. I was, I was really impressed with that. And then I also, I also sat back and I thought to myself, I was just like, Oh my God, man, can you imagine being the fucking, the construction guys that have to build that fucking set? <laughs> right? I, I feel bad for the person who had to fucking come in and write fucking the whole Lord of the Rings on the wall. I mean, exactly, dude. I mean, the whole thing. And and granted, 
you know, I'm pretty sure that a lot of that shit, and it may not have been, you know, that would be another one for the fucking, you know, special features. But if it were me, it'd be a lot of the same shit over and over and over again, just printed on that fucking plexiglass. But, uh, you know, overall, I thought it looked really, really fucking cool. I bet the stickers. That may have been. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, and then... You know, the, the, how I really liked how the sets changed based on the ghosts when you look through the glasses. Like everywhere that the fucking, um, the, the hot big titty fucking, uh, ghost was. The, the angry princess. Sh- whatever. The hot big titty fucking, uh, <laughs> ghost. You know, where all the blood and everything was all over the fucking place and shit like that when she was around or, you know, the fact that the ghosts had their own fucking couch and lamp and shit, you know. The, yeah, like the, they carry their, their set with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that was really cool. I thought the whole part of that was really awesome. So I gave it a nine. There was a couple of little things that I didn't like when it come to it. Like, you know, uh, and this was more of an effects thing. You know, when you're seeing all the gears up underneath moving the fucking the, the big circular floor being CGI and shit like that. You know, I thought it would have been a lot cooler with a fucking miniature. Um, but, you know, that that's more of a special effects kind of thing. So that that kind of took a point off of it for me. But otherwise, I thought it was fucking great. Fair, Jay. Uh, I also gave it a nine. I I really loved the fucking design of the house. Um, again, my Kenneth echoes my thoughts perfectly. Um, but I really love the design of the house. Uh, I think it's it's cool as shit. Um, someone should set something like that up. Like I I'd, I'd love to be able to walk walk around on that set to see how it was done. Um, that would be awesome. But uh, mostly what Kenneth said, I I concur. <laughs> I also gave it a 9. My reason for not giving it a perfect 10 is because eventually it's kind of repetitive. You know? Like, after a little bit, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, I've seen everything there is to see here. Um... So that's the only reason I couldn't give it a 10. But I do want to say, Hellraiser 2022, take notes. This is how you do a demon house. For real. Um, All right, we go to acting, Kenneth. I gave it a 7. A seven. Yeah, and I mean, all right, when you really... uh, Matthew Lillard is the same fucking dude in every movie that he's in. No, oh, he's he is. so good. He's so good. I'm not saying that he's not awesome. Every movie that I watch with him in it is great. You know what I mean? But he's the same fucking guy. You no. know, if you take a movie that is as powerful as SLC Punk and you put it next to his acting in this, he's the same fucking guy. It's the I same. Disagree. I disagree. I, I, I mean, he's just one of those people, man. You know, there's so many actors out there that are the same fucking person in every movie that in every movie that they're in. You know what I mean? And he's one of those people. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love him in his movies that he's in. You know, but to me, like I said, he's the same fucking guy. So I'm gonna rate that a little higher just because I appreciate his style of acting in every single movie that he's in. You know. The same thing with, um, I don't know the actor's name, but he was the one that was in, uh, you mentioned him earlier. He's the one that was in, um, you know, uh, fucking Men in Black. and so on. Oh, Tony Shalhoub? Yeah, the dad. Yeah. To me, he's the same fucking guy in every movie that he's in. He can, is. Can he's you imagine having to call him daddy in bed? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But he's the same fucking guy in every movie that he's in. Just like, uh, what's her name that was in fucking American Pie? You know what I mean? With the exception of her accent in American Pie, she's the same fucking person. Whoa, 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 sir. Her acting while getting fucked by a killer snowman is by far a far step away from her acting in this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm totally sure, man. Um I can Listen, Jack give, Frost is a great movie. Yes, I'll give her credit for her acting in Jack Frost. And I think that scene is absolutely fucking amazing in Jack Frost. But if she were getting fucking raped 
by a damn by one of the ghosts in this movie, I'm pretty sure it would be close to the same thing. Just saying. Hmm. Interesting. Jay, what did you give acting? Um, I gave acting a seven. Um, I disagree with Kenneth on why he gave it a seven, but I I gave it a seven. Um, I love fucking. I th- I think he's a great actor. I think. Uh, He's capable of range. Personally. <laughs> you sound so <laughs> defeated. <laughs> you... I just I just don't I don't know what to say to that. Um, I mean I I'm mean dude think about it. Leader. All right, um, think about it. Think about it, okay? I'm not saying that he doesn't have emotional range for How things can that you he does. not say he doesn't have range? He played Shaggy. Yeah, he, did. <laughs> he played Fruit Loops. Like I said, I'm not saying that he doesn't have no. emotional <laughs> emotional range. Like I said, I always go back to fucking SLC Punk because SLP SLC Punk is like probably my favorite movie that he's in. Serial killer, not Fruit Loops. Either way, <laughs> he's the same fucking guy. And now that you want to bring up hackers, he's the same fucking guy. No, I disagree. You know, whether he's crying because his best friend died or he's fucking goddamn. Or he's crying because you know, he got hit with a phone. Yeah, and he's and his parents are going to fucking kill him or something like that. Or, you know, he's fucking couch surfing to everybody's house because his parents fucking hate him. Either way, he's the same dude. All right, let us know in the Facebook group who you agree with because... Honestly, what it really comes I haven't to seen it. a a couple fight this hard since <laughs> Bruce Willis gonna... and Elijah Wood in in what? North. <laughs> I was going to say the honestly when it comes down to it, I think the character that he's played the most that is the farthest removed from the majority of his characters is Shaggy. I think that's the one that's the furthest removed than okay. the rest of <laughs> Okay, we're moving on. Uh, yeah. a- acting, I gave a seven. No one is bad. Yeah, we all agree. Nothing is really special. Um, the ghosts do their job, though. All right, we move to special effects, Kenneth. Nine. I gave it a nine. I did, think... did you give it a nine because everything looks good until... Uh, daddy has to jump through a bunch of rings. I honestly, I think that whole sequence in the movie is fucking stupid. But it's a little stupid. But everything but it's else, also kind of cool. Everything else, I think that the practical effects that are used on all the ghosts are fucking awesome. I think they all look really, really good. Um. The I think the the digital effects of going back and forth between seeing through the glasses and not seeing through the glasses looks fucking great. Especially my favorite scene where the glasses are sitting on the fucking um, sitting on the shelf and the camera goes through the glasses to where you can see the hot big titty ghosts, angry all princess, her stuff, hot big titty ghosts stuff all over the fucking wall and everything when it goes through the glasses kind of like it's going through a mirror i thought I, I thought that looked fucking great it was fucking seamless i thought that was awesome you know um everything about that you know what i mean the only reason why i didn't give it a 10 again is because i did not like the way the gears and everything looked that were powering and moving the rings and shit that were up at the top that was the biggest gripe that I had because, like I said, I think that could have been done much better with the miniature. But everything else I thought looked fucking phenomenal. The, like I said, they could have done so much CG if they wanted to. And if a movie like that were to get made now, that's what it would be. It would the, All the ghosts would be fucking CG. But they didn't do that. It was all practical effects. And I thought it looked fucking awesome. I thought each one of them looked fucking great. Um, one of my favorites is the torso. When you see the torso moving around and stuff oh, like that, yeah. 
that looked so fucking good, man. And and the only thing I could think of is that there there was two ways that they could have done that. It either was green screen or it was an animatronic. And I want to say it was probably an animatronic, and it looked I fucking guess awesome. Well. I, I can just tell you how they did it. Okay. So it, it's a the guy playing it is a double amputee. Okay. And he has a black bag over his head that is digitally removed. Okay, so that's kind of basically like what I was saying, like a green screen kind of deal. Um, that's cool. That's cool yeah. as fuck. But it looks good for good him as... finding work. I wonder how many acting jobs he gets. Yeah, I mean, probably a lot fucking... in porn. Yeah, it looked fucking great. <laughs> it looked really good. And so I really liked all the all the effects that they did with the ghosts and stuff like that. Like, uh, I can't remember the one with the hammer that I think he was called the hammer. The him? Nope, not the, the juggernaut. Hammer. The hammer was the was the guy with all the nails and shit, all yeah. in his, the big fucking railroad ties in his fucking face. That shit that looked great. That looked really good. And I want to say he was called the hammer. The juggernaut looked really fucking good. Um, you know the uh, the hot big titty ghost. She looked great. You know what I'm the saying? Angry I look princess. At her all day. Hot big titty ghost looked great. But yes, he um, was he was named the hammer. Yeah. I mean, I thought they all looked awesome. The practical effects on that was amazing. So I, that's the reason why I gave it a nine. And like I said, there was only one reason why I didn't give it a ten. All right, Jay, what did you give it? I gave it a nine as well. Um, I feel like the designs of the ghosts were like straight out of a survival horror PS2 game, like something out of Silent Hill or similar. Um, the evil I, man. That's I'd actually say the House on Haunted Hill was more Silent Hill like for its ghost and monsters. Maybe I just mean like I I don't when I watched this movie for the first time up into that point in my life I don't remember seeing such cool and intricate monster designs. I mean I know and now being older uh, and having watched a lot more horror movies obviously. I've been exposed to some of the older stuff that was like that, but they've, they've always stuck with me. Um, and I, I think that their designs are, are just really awesome. Obviously uh, Jay has never seen the nineties classic freaked. No, I have seen that, but they weren't meant to be scary. That was a comedy. Yeah. Jay was called a joke. Well, <laughs> which is also comedy. Excuse my autism. <laughs> <laughs> You're excused. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's my score is a nine. I also give it a nine. It gets a point deducted for, uh, the spinny rings, but, um, can we talk about how fucking awesome the lawyer kill is? Yeah, that one was really good. Jesus Christ. He just, and then when you see the fucking... close up of the back of his body where you can see like the skull and the brain and everything. That shit looked really good. Oh my god, that kill was so fucking good, which is good, because uh, not a lot of kills in this movie, so let's talk about kills and gore, Kenneth. I also gave it a 9. The ones that were there, you know, even though I agree with you, there really wasn't a whole lot, I thought they were really good. I thought the kills and the gore were really good, and I would probably have to say the, the lawyer one fucking takes the cake. That one was really good. I also liked when the juggernaut was just mauling through motherfuckers at the beginning. I fucking thought that was great. But people fucking goddamn getting crushed and fucking being pulled through cars and fucking slammed up against the place and getting pulled apart and everything. I thought it was fucking awesome. I thought that was great. Um, you know, again, going back to the lawyer, I thought his was really, really cool. Uh, Matthew Lillard beaten I thought was actually pretty fucking good especially when the juggernaut picks him up and just fucking bends him across the bar on the wall I thought that was really fucking cool Um, because at first when I first watched that movie I thought he was going to do like a fucking uh, a wrestling move where he fucking just picks him up and slams him down on his knee but no he just fucking wraps him around that fucking pole in the wall and I thought that was great so yeah, I gave uh, I gave the kills in this one a nine. I was just like, those were those were pretty brutal. I liked it. All right, Jay. So this one's uh, kind of half and half. Like I I agree with Kenneth um, up to a point. 
Um, I thought what we got was really good, but I didn't think that there was a whole lot. So I deducted points and gave it a seven. Um, like I said, I, I really enjoyed what we got. The the opening was was awesome when he was sucking people into cars and shit like that, cutting them in or ripping them in half. And uh, the lawyer getting split in half was really good. But uh, after that, there's there's not a whole lot in that department. So it uh, it got reduced for me. Yeah, I'm with you, Jay. I gave it a seven because you're gonna have all these cool ass ghosts and like none of them get to fucking murder people. Like the Juggernaut does all of the killing in this movie because the ang- <laughs> the angry princess technically didn't kill the lawyer. He backed up and a door shut on him. Like the Juggernaut gets to kill everybody. Also, can we discuss how like? fast those doors would have to close to cut him in half like that oh yeah this is this is kenneth and his pitchfork again <laughs> oh yeah if we really if, if we want to get into that we can get into that no we don't need to just no, take, we don't just need to. take the pitchfork it argument from the prowling and replace a couple of things and apply it to this <laughs> yeah but you know it is what it is. Also, it looks fucking cool, though. I will give it that. It looks fucking cool. I wish they would have like, they would have went just a little bit further with the chick getting fucking crushed in between the glass. Yeah. yeah well, well, apparently, uh, her eyes were supposed to pop out and shit, but the director didn't do it because he thought he would get an NC seventeen rating. Oh, then you just digitally remove it and leave it alone. Yeah. So, I don't gotta, know, you man. Try. Because. You gotta try. If you, at this point, if you're gonna fucking the shit with the lawyer, that one was fucking great. And and I, I, I don't know, man. The fucking eyeballs popping out and stuff like that. If if the fucking lawyer didn't get you an NC seventeen, I doubt the eyeballs popping out and shit would. I think people are gonna be uh, the eyeballs. The eye, eyeballs get more people. Cutting in but, half is cool and all, but an eye, anything dealing with eyeballs is going to put more. They're going to be like, the eyeballs, it's too extreme. It's just too much. But I've always I've always had this thing about getting squished like that. And, you know, especially if it was coming at you slow. Or you can fuck it. You got time to think about the fact that you're not getting out. And you're fucked. And all of a sudden you start feeling that pain and getting squished. And it's not like it's going to be instantaneous. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be an Ocean Gate thing where you just all of a sudden are just... Bleh. You know what I mean? It's It's more of a slow... Uh, even at the speed that I was going, it's, ugh. Yeah. So the killing of the soldiers, it's okay in the beginning. Uh, it's, it's all right. Then we pretty much just get the one cool kill of the movie of the lawyer getting split in half. And then we get to see someone get chiropractory done midair. Okay, cool. Whatever. Uh, it, it just, just, uh, there's not enough in this movie, and if it wasn't for how good the lawyer kill was, man, I would drop the score so hard on this. But I, I could only give it a seven. So, fuck, fuck. Okay, y'all's done. We move on to Monster Killer, Kenneth. Nine. The ghosts were great. That's the way I look at it. I looked at, I looked. To me, the monsters were all the ghosts and they were the ones that were the highlight you could put cyrus in there and that's the only reason why they didn't get a 10 is because he technically he's the villain of the movie but as for if you're looking at it at at monsters and killer that kind of thing you know what i mean you the the ghosts themselves outshine cyrus through the whole thing. I mean, he's a fucking terrible person and whatever else, you know, but that he, to me, he's the reason why it, I didn't give it a perfect 10. If it had been solely focused on the ghosts themselves, it would have got a perfect 10. All right, Jay. A hundred percent agree. I also gave it a nine. Um, I counted the ghosts as, as in the monster part of the monster killer category. Um, I agree that the, uh, that Cyrus was kind of like a little too generic bad guy for me. Um, and that's, that's kind of why it lost the point, but, but the ghosts 
man, those ghosts are just great in in every every way. All right, I gave it an eight um, because yes, St- Cyrus is very much the stock I'm rich and evil guy. Even though I will say, I th- d- dude's pretty fucked up for for you know what he's doing to his nephew, how he used the 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 one chick like so you know what he's got some he's got some fucking credit on that um and then yeah the monster uh all the ghosts are absolutely wonderful if not a little underused um think we could have you know used a little bit more of that um but this is why you know if you're gonna have the 12 ghosts of the black zodiac you kind of need some kind of more longer format but because of the, yeah i just don't think we got enough of the the hot big titty ghosts we should have got <laughs> a lot more of her angry princess hot big titty ghost <laughs> i'm smoking smoking hot we Them black eyes just do it for me dude <laughs> We um, move into Hero, Kenneth. You know, this one was difficult for me because the hero is supposed to be the dad. And it was difficult for me to take him seriously. You know, I don't know why there's just, you know, like I said when I was talking about the acting with that guy, you know, whatever. And then you could put, uh, I, I put Matthew Lillard more in the hero area of it because he kind of he sacrificed himself. He he actually sacrificed himself to save other people. Where the whole thing was supposed to be the dad sacrificing himself. I mean, if you really fucking think about it, I mean, you know, it's supposed to be a sacrifice out of pure love, but Matthew Lillard sacrificed himself to save somebody else that he didn't know and their family and, and that person's family. So honestly, when you really, when it really comes down to it, he almost could be the 13th ghost. Kenneth, you realize that Matthew Lowe's character straight up goes, uh, no, this isn't the 13th ghost thing. It's not right. I think you're getting tricked. Don't do it. Right, Which is true. There was no, the thirteenth ghost is to like stop it. Was the no tr- like the dad was supposed to be the one who, if he sacrificed himself for his kids, that was the thing that would open it up for freaking Cyrus to be able to see into hell. Oh, I thought you like understood it that like if he sacrificed it, it would save him. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, never no. mind then. My bad. So uh, the way I was looking at it is like after uh, with what Matthew Lillard did, I mean, you know, he's kind of borderlining on giving Cyrus what he wanted because he sacrificed himself for people that he did not really know. I mean, that's the only thing that fucking separates it, right? Well, there that and the... you have to literally jump into the middle of the thing. Either way, like a you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but uh, I mean, still, you know, and what he I'm did saying? that I mean, before. It, like, he did that before any of the ghosts even were standing around the thing. So, like, he didn't come close to giving Cyrus what he wanted. Either way, I look at it as it's riding a fine line between it. It's but it's but it, I with still, the lore, it's not at all. But the way that I the way that I perceive it is he's I, I look at him as more of a hero of the of the whole thing than than damn. Uh, than the kid's father. I look at him as more of it. And because of me having that kind of confusion and looking at it the way that I do and everything else like that, I gave it a seven. All right. Jay, what did you give it? Uh, I'm on the same page for the most part. Uh, I also gave it a seven. Um, I wasn't sure fully who we were supposed to be rating. Um, There was no, like, like, like the dad became the focus at the end. But Matthew Lillard was trying to stop the thing from the get-go, you know, and it's just just hard for me to decide. Um, and that, that's kind of why I was split on it, and so I gave it a 7. Gotcha. Um, I gave it a 4. <laughs> because the father is the hero that the, the movie set. Um, and he only got a 4 instead of a 2. 
because he rolled up and punched Cyrus in his fucking face like a G. Just was like, I don't give a fuck if you is a ghost, I'm throwing hands. <laughs> and he didn't get tricked. Uh, so I, 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 I gave him two extra points for that because I was like, bro, you were boring as shit. Um, like you'll get all mad and then you'll just be like, well, okay guys, like fuck out of here. You get a four. That's what you get. Um, Kenneth score and soundtrack. Um, I gave it an eight. I thought the music that was in there did really well on, you know, um, conveying what it needed to convey, but it really wasn't nothing special. The uh, the reason why I gave it such a high fucking score is because of the music that they chose to go into the movie. Same thing, you know. The movie came out in two thousand and one, and it had some and it had some you know decent bangers for the time period, and they chose it really well. So that was the reason why I kind of rated it a little higher, but it still didn't get it as high as uh, House on Haunted Hill. So, all right, there are car alarms going on outside. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Uh, Jay, what did you give it? Uh, I gave it a five. Uh, keep in mind that this category is again really hard for me. Um, I, I'll make the joke that there was uh, no Marilyn Manson, so it lost the point versus House on Haunted Hill. Uh, but in reality, it just nothing really stood out to me or or struck struck a chord with me to enough to remember it. So straight in the middle because nothing pissed me off either. Um, I gave it a six, and I actually gave it a point because it had a song I really liked, you know, I believe in people dying. I believe in people. I, I like that song. I like that artist. Every time someone uses like that, uh, whether it's, uh, like, I, don't, I don't know what it is. That song is just, I be jamming to it. I just get down to it. I could jack off to that song. hundred <laughs> percent. Um, so I get, I gave it a, a, a six. Uh, we moved to Scare Factor, Kenneth. Um, I gave Scare Factor a four. There's only a couple of moments in here where it even begins to be creepy to me. I did not. I do not find this movie very scary at all. There's a couple of moments, but otherwise, and I actually kind of rated it a little high. I gave it, you know, I gave it a little extra. But to me, this movie isn't scary at all. All right, Jay. Uh, I gave it a six. Um, I think some of the ghost designs are are pretty creepy, um, and, uh, and that's where it landed for me. This is uh, the same. Feel the same way about it as I did on House on Haunted Hill. So I ended up scoring it the same. All right, I gave it a uh, seven because some of the ghost creeped me out. The torso creeps me out. Um, the, the bound woman reminds me a little bit too much of, uh, prom night two, uh, hello, Mary Sue. Uh, and I think that's, that's very, very important. Uh, <laughs> the torn prince scares me cause I'm scared of car wrecks. The angry princess scares me because she looks like she would sleep with you and then stab you in the chest. Uh, for some like weird blood ritual to make her look prettier, uh, the great child scares me uh, because he's 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 a really big fat baby. That's just fucking weird. Um, the dire mother scares me because she looks like that weird fucking big head witch from Spirited Away, and that bothers me. <laughs> uh, the hammer scares me because he has a hammer for a hand. And I would be worried that if he found me attractive and tried to fist me, it would be very bad for me. Um, the jackal scares me the most. That's just, he, he's just unpredictable. Like, bro has a cage on his head. Like, I'm terrified. Um, and the juggernaut, you know, he's just, he's Edward Kemper in a junkyard. And he, but you know, if I didn't mess with him, he probably wouldn't mess with me. He mostly killed like prostitutes, I think. So no, that was the jackal. 
I think he just killed anyone. He just like breaking, like they said, he just likes breaking every bone in a body. You know? So, picturing, oh, and I'm just scared of like rich guy, rich fucking old dudes. Like, if that dude just wanted to like pay me, pay someone to like steal me and take me to like Bohemian Grove and I just get like fucked with a knife like that's just happening I'm not being able to stop that so the the ghosts scare the ever loving shit out of me uh, so I gave it a 7 anyway entertainment Kenneth <laughs> I gave it an 8 I think it's I think it's pretty entertaining I mean it's fun to watch it's another one that's a good ride you know what I mean it's one of those that uh, even though I don't watch it you know regularly it's one of those that if it comes on or something like that it's going to pique my interest and i'm going to watch it so i went ahead and gave it an eight I all think, right i think it's pretty entertaining jay uh, i gave it a seven i also think it's pretty entertaining i just think it's seven entertaining versus eight entertaining <laughs> okay um yeah fair I, I gave it a six and it's i just i like i like the lore and i like the ghost but like rewatching the movie, it's not a bad movie. It's a good movie. But rewatching the movie just kind of made me realize that the things that I like about the movie and find interesting about the movie are not fully presented in the movie. You know, throwback to something Kenneth said back in story. But yeah, so we'll move into rewatchability. Kenneth? I also put that one at an eight. Because it is rewatchable for me. Like I said, most of the time, if it if it comes on or I catch it, like if there's an advertisement for it or something like that, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I haven't watched that in a minute. I want to watch that again. And I'll end up going back and watching it again. So, All right, Jay? Uh, I gave it a six. I uh, it, Again, it's one of those movies that uh, that I'll, I'll get a hankering to watch every once in a while, but it's a long while between watches. Affair. Uh, my rewatchability is six also. I'd rather just read up on the ghost at this point. Like, I like the lore more than I like the movie. So, yes, yeah, so it also makes me think. I think I'm gonna, I might redo these categories and put entertainment and rewatchability together and replace that with a different category. I don't know what yet, mm. but that thought just crossed my mind. So, we end with Kenneth's favorite one pop culture. Um, I'll put it at a seven. You know, I think it's one of those that has grown in uh, status of amongst horror fans and things like that and has come back. Like I said, it's got a cult following. It's one of those that didn't do well. So I put it at a seven. I mean, because most people, you know, if you talk to them, even outside of horror fandom or something like that, if you mention the name 13 Ghosts now, at least a lot of people out there, at the very least, know of the movie, you know? So I kind of put it at a seven. I really didn't put it too high, you know what I mean? But I also didn't put it too low. It's kind of one of those that, like I said, I mean, if you say the name 13 Ghosts, most people out there, especially around our age range, know it. Very true. Jay, what did you give it? Uh, I gave it an eight. Um... I don't think a week goes by where this movie isn't mentioned in at least one of the groups I'm in. Um, the horror-related groups, anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it it gets talked about, that meme about Netflix should make a, a show about each ghost uh, gets kicked around a lot. It's, it's just, it's super ingrained in the horror community as something that gets talked about. We are pretty much all together because... I gave it a seven. That's right. Kenneth got a pop culture one. Correct. Um, no one cared when it came out. Not on a mainstream sense. But now everyone cares and everyone's starting to care more because all of us who rented on VHS and then later got the DVD are now going, hey, we want more. Put this as a Netflix series. And it's one of those that have really like crawled and I think if this gets a Netflix series, whether that series is good or bad, this goes up another knot in pop culture. 
you know, it keeps going based on that th- there's longevity here. And it's 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 a cult classic that didn't quite make it back then, which we've seen happen in horror. It happened to John Carpenter's The Thing, didn't do well in theaters, blew up when it got released on VHS. Same thing happened here. It, it, it and made, what? And I was going to say, that's also one of the things that's the difference between the two movies that we did. You know what I'm saying? House on Haunted Hill actually got a sequel. It did. It got a. It got a straight to home video sequel. You know. So I mean, that's one of the things that I can say about both movies is that you know, even though House on Haunted Hill really didn't fucking go very far in the status of pop culture like Thirteen Ghost has, at least House on Haunted Hill got a sequel. So I kind of because both my scores are the same between the two of them. Fair. Um. I think I still think longevity wise, I think Thirteen Ghosts is winning that battle. Um, yeah. Just because now, keep in mind, House on Haunted Hill is propped up by a much, much more popular movie. Like I would bet money, Jay has seen the original House on Haunted Hill, but has not seen the original Thirteen Ghosts. Correct. You win. You know, as to where you like, I've seen it because I like old films i like william castle i can tell you what the gimmick was for each film like i'm into that kind of stuff but like the mainstream audience i would still bet hey they've seen this vincent price movie they have not seen the original 13 ghosts in fact most people when they talk about this movie do not talk about it as a remake because i they would agree don't understand it that it's a remake same thing happens with like um house of wax when people talk about House of Wax, most of the time they don't talk about it as a remake, even though it's a remake of a Vincent Price film, which it in itself is a remake of another film. Certain movies get lost in translation, and certain movies are just so strong that if they are a remake, there's more people going, oh, don't remake that, or the opposite side of of it is, People don't know that original film, so they don't really get that it's a remake. You know, that's that's kind of the two sides of the coin there. Um, so, with our ending totals, we have me at 76, Kenneth at 111, and Jay at 111. Y'all both tied. Ooh. Um... But with that being said, uh, the winner is House on Haunted Hill. I know a lot of people weren't expecting that. I think a lot of people were expecting I wasn't even expecting the that. winner I to be 13 movies. Ghosts. <laughs> I, when, when I started watching 13 Ghosts today, I was actually a little surprised where I was like, this movie is not as good as I remember it being. I, I I mostly just care about the ghost and not the characters. Like I kind of like the the story of Cyrus, but it just like the movie itself is not. Like I don't care about the characters. I don't care about how it was shot. I don't even really care about the glass house. I care about the ghost and the lore, and that's why like I think that meme that goes around where where people like remake it as a series is because. We don't really necessarily give a shit about the movie. There's a part in the movie that we really like and we want that. That we didn't originally get. That's what we want. And yep. so we have a higher opinion of 13 Ghosts than it deserves. Because there is something so unique there that we want that we haven't got. And you know, they could have every episode, if every episode is about the ghost, you could have every episode end with them getting captured, which leads into... So they said that's basically the what movie. they want the first season to be. And then the second season he talked about was on the lines of, you know, what happens after the movie, because they all escape. Right, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly it. <laughs> then the next, uh, then they could do a sequel. Exactly, that's it. So me and me and the 
director, whoever you just said, are on the same exact page. <laughs> well, I don't think they have a director yet, but the people at at Dark Castle, that's what they yeah. want to well, do. So I well, wish I was a people. Before we go, <laughs> I actually want to read uh, these little, these are more condensed. There are longer versions, but these are more condensed as to uh, the Black Zodiac. So, the first burned sun, the first ghost in the Black Zodiac, the first born sun is, wait, hold on, I want to see, did the other one I have pulled up, is it better? Give me a second, I want to check, I think the other one I had pulled up was better, better, but yeah. I don't know, they're about the same. Uh, Billy, the first born son, Billy Michaels, was a young boy who loved pretending to be a cowboy. One day, another little kid challenged Billy to a duel. But Billy's cap gun was no match for the boy's real steel-tipped arrow that Billy's ghost still carries. Unlike most of the ghosts, this one is a mild threat, never attacking anyone and just saying, I want to play. How sweet. The Torso. Jimmy the Gambler Gambino was a gambler in the early 1900s who caught the attention of the Mafia after he lost a boxing bet and didn't have the money to pay up. The Mafia cut him up into pieces, wrapped him in cellophane, and dumped the remains into the ocean. His ghost appears as a torso with a severed head nearby and is more of a neutral spirit than actively hostile. It's just scary. <clears throat> yeah. The Bound Woman. Susan Legro was the richest girl in town and was very popular in school. Her one flaw was the way she flirted and toyed with boys and men, leaving a long trail of broken hearts. During her senior prom night, Chet Walters, the star quarterback, caught Susan cheating on him with another boy. Wow, this definitely sounds like the plot to prom night 2. Hello, Mary Lou, or Mary <laughs> yeah, C- I can't remember. Does. Yeah, anyway. Um, the next day, the boy was found beaten to death, and Susan had gone missing. Susan was found dead two weeks later, buried beneath the 50-yard line of the high school's football field. Her ghost lured Bobby into the dangerous basement and still shows her in her prom attire, bound ropes holding her arms. And if you watch the special features for the thing, the Bobby's last w- words at his trial were, bitch broke my heart, so I broke her neck. <laughs> the Withered Lover. Uh, Jean, Jean Cryptos, which is, you know, Eddie, uh, his wife, uh, was a happy and devoted wife and mother. She died as a result of a fire injuries at St. Luke's Hospital half a year before the events of the film begin. Unlike the most of the ghosts, she is not dangerous. She is benevolent. Fuck. Okay. (laughs) The Torn Prince. Royce Clayton was a gifted and famous teenage baseball player in the 1950s who caught the eyes of colleges around the USA. He died in a drag race thanks to his challenger, a greaser, who cut his brake lines. His remains are still buried at the baseball diamond and his ghost carries his baseball bat. The Angry Princess. A.K.A. The Hot Big Titted Ghost. Dana Newman was a beautiful but abused lady who lived in the late 20th century. She had plastic surgeries to alter her perceived flaws and after a botched experiment that mutilated her eyes, she brutally killed herself in a bathtub at the clinic. Her ghost is a bloody na- was b- bloody naked and carries the same knife she used to commit suicide. So her hers like the extended one talks about how she was actually working for a plastic surgeon in exchange for free surgeries. And one night she saw some kind of flaw in her face, and when she tried to move remove it herself, she ended up like fucking up her eye and then killed herself in the bathtub, which I thought was cool. The Pilgrimess. Isabella Smith came to North America as a colonist in order to find a new life after being an orphan in England. The tight-knit community ostracized and ignored her and used her as a scapegoat, being accused of witchcraft when crops and animals mysteriously died. She denied such accusations, but she was trapped in a burning barn and managed to escape unharmed. 
That sealed her fate, and she died of starvation after being condemned to the pillory, which, you know, the stocks, uh, that she carries with her as a ghost. Her skin is badly damaged. The Great Child. Harold Shelbourne was a mentally disabled man who never outgrew diapers and had to be spoon-fed even as a full-grown adult. He often made baby sounds. After being mocked, teased, and tormented relentlessly all his life, he caused a massacre at the old freak show where he and his mother, Margaret Shelburne, lived. One of the freaks had kidnapped and killed his mother as a joke one night. The circus owner, Jimbo, had Harold, had Harold mutilated beyond recognition. His ghost appears as Harold did in life with a small patch of hair, a bib covered in vomit, and clothes diapers. He still holds the axe he used to kill his enemies. The Dire Mother Margaret Shelbourne, Harold's mother, was a shy little lady standing three feet tall. She never could stand up for herself. At the freak show where she lived, she was raped by the tall man, another circus freak, and gave birth to her illeg illegitimate son, Harold, who she loved more than life herself. She smothered and spoiled him from infancy and never stopped as he grew. This is the main reason for Harold's mental handicap. The two were abused to the point where Harold killed almost the entire surface after Margaret died. As ghosts, they remained together with Harold being protective. Like the torso, she is not aggressive and is more of a neutral spirit. The Hammer A happy and honest family man and blacksmith in the early 1890s, George Markley, Markle, Markley, I don't know, was falsely accused of stealing a higher up named, was accused by stealing by a higher up named Nathan. For the record, the other way this is read is a black man was accused by a white man of stealing. That's how it was told in the video. Um, and threatened with exile from their old western town. Knowing he was innocent, George stood up to Nathan and refused to leave. One day when George's family was walking home from the market, Nathan and his gang of thugs attacked and killed them brutally. In rage, George took his blacksmith's hammer, tracked down Nathan and his friend, and beat them to death. But the town folks changed, chained him to a tree outside his blacksmith's shop and drove railroad spikes into his body. His left hand was cut off and his hammer was crudely attached to it. His ghost is one of the more angry spirits in his partially responsible for Dennis' death. The Jackal, my favorite one. Born to a prostitute in 1887, Ryan Cunn developed a sick appetite for women, attacking and raping strays and prostitutes in the night. Seeking to be cured of his insatiable appetite, Ryan voluntarily committed himself to Bore Boreham Wood. Boreham Wood. All right, Boreham Wood Asylum for treatments. But after years of solitary confinement, Ryan went completely insane, scratching on the walls so violently his fingernails were torn completely off. In response, the doctors kept him permanently bound in a straitjacket, tying it tighter whenever he acted out, contorting his limbs. After gnawing through the straitjacket to get free, the doctors locked his head in a cage and sealed him away in a cell in the basement. While there, he developed a hatred of humanity, screaming madly and cowering whenever approaching, whenever approached by people. When the asylum burst into flames... Are you still in the bath? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I am in the bath. Sorry, guys. You're good. Whenever approach, uh, When the asylum burst into flames, he chose to stay behind and perish in the fire while everyone else escaped. His ghost carries his torn straight jacket with the torn cubic head cage. It is called a sign of Hell's Winter. He is one of the more aggressive and violent ghosts, attacking and nearly killing Kathy before Kalina saves him. And then we finally reach the Juggernaut. Horace Breaker Mahoney was born very disfigured and was an outcast his entire life. His mother abandoned him at a tender age and his dad put him to work in the junkyard, using his unusual strength to crush cars. After his dad died, Horace went insane. He would take motorists and hitchhikers, tear them apart with his bare hands, and feed their remains to his dogs. 
so he's a dog person. He'll get dates on Tinder. After several of these murders, he was arrested. A SWAT team shot and killed him when he broke free of his handcuffs. As a ghost, he remained in the junkyard with his body riddled with bullet holes, killing intruders. And killing intruders. Both Dennis and Cyrus remarked that his kill count n- numbered in the 40s, making his ghost one of the most evil and dangerous of the 12. So there you go. I wanted to leave everyone with kind of, if you've never looked it up, those are the kind of slimmed down brief versions of the stories of the 12 ghosts of the Zodiac, of the Black Zodiac. So now you know. Now I know. Knowing's half the battle. It is. The other half is violence. (laughs) Yeah. So with that being said, thank you all for joining us. Um, well, we are going to try to record more often. See you in four months, everybody.